Sponge, will you or will you not sleep on Cloud9? Full sentence reply. I, I will not sleep on Cloud9. There's a there's a fun like gag I wanted to do where I um, get Cloud9 pajamas on a Cloud9 bed set. Okay. <laughs> right? And physically sleep on Cloud9. Add some fun to your space with Extrify. Designed in Sweden with focus on quality products built on experience. You're looking at Project 4. They're four generation of products with super cool colorways to stand out with matching sets to satisfy with a solid B4 bungee, lightweight ergonomic M4 mouse, the K4 keyboard is fantastic, all of which are performance focused, and finish it off with colorful GP4 mouse mats that are bold in design and smooth on the surface. The retro theme in particular has got the feels. Complete your setup with Extrify. No regrets, guaranteed. Hey buddy, let me show you how to fix that. Bitskins.com. Buy and sell skins instantly. Deposit and withdraw funds instantly with crypto or directly to your Visa card. <laughs> Bitskins.com. The best skin marketplace. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Counter-Strike fans around the globe, welcome to another installment of HL TV Confirmed. Today is Tuesday, the 26th of April, 2022, and this is Season 6, Episode 14, The Calm Before the Storm. Quick shout-out to our sponsors who week in, week out support the show. Extra fire, check them out if you need some peripherals. They got all that go-getter over there. I was just having a look today. They have, uh, I don't know if you boys have seen this stuff. I said it's getting a little bit more popular with some of the players out there. They've called it Lizard Skin Grip. Which okay. is grip tape for your mouse. I've seen some players like floating with some some colorful grip tape on the mouse. Mm -hmm. So something could be getting a bit of popularity. Extra fire's got that over there for their mice. Uh Bitskins, buy and sell Cisco skins and items, and M1 Bet gamble responsibly. Uh as always, the show gets uploaded into an audio-only digestible form of your choice. Head over to anchor.fm slash HLTV. About 24 to 48 hours after the show airs, you can get it over there on Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts. And many, many more. And a uh, big shout out to the subscribers we have in Twitch. We're getting a couple more of them. We, we do notice you. Eventually, we'll have some way of uh, giving you a thank you. We'll, we're talking about different stuff all the time. We're, we're waiting to see who comes up with the better idea. Is it going to be Striker or a Prof? Uh, we don't know yet. And okay. Wait, this, am this, I supposed to come up with something? Or I don't know. <laughs> Did I miss we, something? We can at some point. Right? I don't know. It, it's something that we've we got to come better emotes, maybe. I don't better know. emotes. Better emotes. I don't know Not what people idea. like. Maybe they can be in an exclusive club. They can be the first to get HLTV Premium. Oh. Yeah. Get yeah. some like insight into like, like the the newest updates coming. Yeah. yeah. There's or, like the new verified verified user on HLTV. You know, there's a couple of them floating around. I've seen a couple of them post. I I can't believe Fia Shocks is getting involved in the forums. That's how you know that we're in a fucking Anders like simulation. Yeah, it's it's amazing, man. It's it's amazing. Um, you okay. know, you know that you know she's gotten exposed to like prof. The, oh the, yeah. The, 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 yeah in the green room the whole time just there just yeah like these are our forum you know like <laughs> yeah come and see the degenerates of the internet if you want anyway everybody who's i'm watching. sure she's used to it but like uh true she has like six hundred thousand followers like she must be getting this shit yeah on a daily no, basis nothing not yeah nothing nothing new i feel, like. I feel like the forums have been doing well they've been doing well they've been uh, they're reformed improved. they're i'm not gonna say reformed but you know it's a good trajectory yeah. so, okay it's on the way up it, yeah. it, it, they could really only be on the way up all right uh, everybody, I need everyone to be quite tame again this evening. It's the second show Dimitri is going to be producing. So we're going to take it one step at a time. Last week was perfect. There's no dramas. It all went swimmingly. So hopefully we can do that again today. But we've been alluding to this right now. And uh, back from his slice of life anime analyst arc, Prof, uh, <laughs> what heartfelt message did you learn on your journey that you can impart on our viewers? Man, uh, 
it's it's all about being the best human you can be that's it and that's it. Uh, it's a it's a big struggle it's a big struggle <laughs> it's a day in day out that's struggle the, that's the biggest struggle everything else you know the work it's nothing you know that comes but like being being human is hard okay all right that's deep right there that's i can i can get on board with that all right uh striker you've What's been up? our uh, stay at home parent man right. in the battlefield of the regional maker sorry but again i fucked it up mate I've written, it, maker. I've, written, I've written it here and i've fucked it up why, why do so you have why, something I prepared, just, actually. I should, this why well, yeah i've been i've come prepared with a nice intro today i thought okay. you know we could get the ball rolling so we'll, we'll forget that everything happened in the i past, can try this one again seconds. go again all right because everyone at home i hope you forgive me striker our stay-at-home parent manning the battlefield of our regional major ranking two-week onslaught uh gathering the intel of how it all went down from a viewer's perspective in five words or less summarize your entire counter-strike experience wow five words huh NA sucks, you best. Fuck, I don't know. <laughs> wow, okay. Look, there's provocative there. We can get into that a little bit later. We, we can definitely... I, I, you've given us a lot to work with here. But uh, I don't know if at the start of the show you boys took notice, right? I called it Season 6, Episode 14, and I've titled it The Calm Before the Storm, right? The okay. armors are finished. We can sit back. We can digest what happens. There's no that panic. There's still two weeks, still plenty of time. It's not like, oh my God, it's the week of yet. This is kind of like a chance for us to marinate in our own juices. Do you guys think it's a it's a fitting name for tonight's episode? I think it's perfect. That's yeah. how I that's how I feel. I feel like this like it's very coming off of the hype train into like this lull period, uh, stewing. You know, it's you're putting putting your like percolating. Yeah, you're putting on like two out of ten, leaving it there to simmer for a bit, and then it's gonna be like that peak peak taste when you know everything. How do how do you say it? It, the water evaporates just a bit. It gets like okay. thick, thick and juicy, and that's what we're gonna have. At the we're major. reducing it down. Yeah, reducing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, before we roll the bumper, one second, Dimitri. I don't want to give you any false sense. This is just a little synopsis for the viewers on tonight's show and listening to the audio only edition. And maybe our viewers tuning in right now of what to expect tonight. Uh, we're going to be getting into the recent news. We're going to be talking about uh, Gambit finding a new home. This week's N1 moment, the ERMR fallout. Who wants to be a skinnier? And if we haven't run over time, we'll take some viewer questions. I see there's a bunch of those today. So now that I've settled that, Dimitri, roll the bumper and let's get into the recent news. All right, we're back into action here. And uh, as I just mentioned, the, the Gambit situation is probably where we should start the recent news. It's probably some of the biggest news. Uh, so you want to give the people at home a bit of a synopsis of what happened here, Striker? It's not that difficult for them to yeah. understand, is it? Not, not really. It's just that, um, I mean, I guess the process is a little bit difficult. I don't even, I'm not even sure that I understand it in terms of how it actually came through, through an agency that first acquired their rights and then they sold them to Cloud9. So I'm not entirely like up to date on what the process was like there. I imagine it was something due to do with, you know, transactions between Russians and American companies. Who the hell knows why this this happened, but that's how it happened. But anyway, like the Gambit roster was just acquired by Cloud9, uh, including Groove, who had left kind of like a management position a couple, a couple of months ago in Gambit to kind of like, you know, make it known that he's focusing on coaching and he wants to make this transition with the entire team. And that's, yeah, that's it. Okay. Yeah, it was pretty straightforward, it seemed, but it was hype news, right? I think for most people watching, most viewers, the question is, oh, not the question, the, the thing to get excited about is, oh, Cloud9's back in Counter-Strike, right? And it's very well-timed. It's obviously the position after the team is just qualified for the next major. They know they're going to get stickers in the game. It's already, it's a top three team in the world, right? It's it's fantastic time for Cloud9 to make a movement back into Counter-Strike. They can just pick themselves up a, a name that is going to be contending in the best events. I suppose the only thing that is there is, is Cloud9 a partner team, but they're you know the events anyway, because they're going to qualify, right? Uh, the the blast stuff, I guess, is a different conversation. But uh, like for example, like they get into pro league and stuff. If they're able to retain this type of a ranking, right, they should be yeah. able to continue to get back in those big events. You'd, you'd also kind of presume that Cloud Nine is going to invest in these spots. Like I, I feel like that's I mean, not a certainty, but like they are an org. If they want to commit to CS, like why couldn't they be one of the next? When someone drops out, that they would be a name that you expect to be competing for. Do you think uh, they bid? Like do you? Because I kind of see like after the them, flashpoint fiasco. Yeah, it's kind of yeah, like a fuck you. Like we can be in your events without having to yeah. you know be like a founder team or pay it or whatever we i mean to, a good team 
to be fair, if you have a really good team, I'm not even sure what exactly what benefit is, is. Is, the, is the benefit of yeah. it. Because like, if let's say the buyout, the buyout is, we assume pretty high because the last, like the EPL one anyway, was the Louvre agreement. But one was like 20 million across three teams. And if you think about kind of like the revenue that they get back, you know, and I'm talking about just the revenue, not based on what they get also by the invites, because if you're a high enough team, you're just going to get invited to everything like we said. Yeah. So that's not, that's not, a, but not the benefit that we're taking into account. But there's no way you're going to make back, even if it's six million on average across whatever time it is. The deal is probably like two or three years or something like that. Like it depends you're what the maybe going to break there, even right? if you're if you're lucky. I'm I'm assuming because what's right? I, I thought it could depend on what the rev share is. Like I don't think the rev share could be anything the crazy, rev share right? Is, is relatively like it was something around. It was they said something about six figures for each team last year, but that could be between hundred thousand and nine hundred ninety nine thousand. Sure, you know, but I think it's the on the lower. Yeah, exactly. I, I would I would hazard a guess that it's on the lower end of the of the six figures. So, uh, like I like I said, it's probably going to take a decade for you to make that money back through revenue alone, you know? So it, it doesn't seem like there's that much benefit to it. I could be wrong though. I, I don't know all the business details, obviously. I think the cool thing with this is, right, you could still get yourself into a, like a blast world or global finals. I forget the name that they have over there, right. but if you win a pro league, right? Like if mm. you, can, you yeah. can, or you win a major, for example, right? Then you get yourself, so you get to play in everything just by being good. And I kind of like, I get that sentiment you're saying right there, Striker. Like the idea of this, I guess, with partner teams is to be there at the ground level. So in like years time when the rev share is like a shitload and that's when the teams can actually make some like proper money off of it. I guess the founding teams who are already there must be making money off of it already. Or at least, you know, you'd have to think so because I don't think they bought in. I don't really understand. Yeah, I don't exactly know what the partnership looked at first. Obviously, the ones that came in before, that was the 20 million thing, which is big, heroic and fury, right? Um, so yeah, I don't know how it looked from the, for the first, what was it? 12 teams or something like that. Yeah. Uh, maybe something we have to look into here just to get a bit more information on if that's even available. Um, the other one, obviously we touched on a little bit was how the deal was going to go down. W which interview was it in? Was it in like a dust to one that was mentioned or where was, someone had some interview of some variety where it was talking about how the deal went down. Was that through the, through the agency thing? Yeah. I where don't know. I actually don't know out. where it came from it was somewhere like sports business tweet. journal maybe okay i want to say I, I could be wrong yeah if anybody has the link for it maybe just whack it in chat or tweet it or some shit like that but um, i want to also just uh, take a moment to just say that i was right but because if we remember maybe like 10 episodes ago we did mention a potential gambit sale to you know an american organization and you guys yeah. were like but that can't happen because sanctions yeah. and i'm like Come there's on, a there's gonna there's gonna be a way, and uh, there's always a way. Uh, and also, I also have to say, like, I'll just like start timing out people that like spam things and different languages because it doesn't make any sense or add anything to people in chat. So, like, sorry in advance. Yeah, that's it. you just kind sorry, of not sorry, not really adding to the experience. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Yeah, it's not it's not a fun time. Like, write things that make sense. Uh, spams, you know, not cool. Just not fun for for people. Yeah, we normally have a bit of a, a nice conversation going on in the chat, don't yeah. we? All right. Well, uh, yeah. Do we have much more? I think other than this, it's good. I read something uh, that they're helping the players relocate, which I guess makes sense for yeah. travel purposes. Um, so that's good. Like Cloud9. I, oh, this is one angle that I wanted to talk about. Well, here we go. I'm remembering. I'm fucking remembering right now. This is almost, it, from my perspective, a bit of a win-win, right? Because not only does Cloud9 get like a top three team in the world, they get some stickers straight away. They go straight into a major that the name is like well embedded within where Counter-Strike is at, at the moment in the competitive. And it's a nice org for Gambit players to sign with. And, and this is not meant to sound like crazy disrespectful, but I'm sure I will... I'm sure I'll upset some people, right? But it's not like Gambit had the massive fan base. They're not pulling like Navi numbers. They're not pulling like Brazilian numbers. Those are like the, the real high end. But then you'd have some other teams like, I guess like G2 and Phaser also towards that high end, right? Like, yeah. But you have some of these teams that just have massive fan bases because they're fans of like the org or the certain players that they're fans of. And it's not that like there's not a reason to be fans of these play these Gambit players. It's just like they didn't have necessarily the biggest profiles. Like they need to have a couple of games in these arena where Shiro does something otherworldly and like wins a clutch and just sits there like a baller or like has some sick reaction or something like that for a few more people to start loving them and loving the personality. But I think that's why it's good for these guys to join that team of Cloud9 because it's such a it's such a well liked name, right? Whether that's the history of seeing um, nothing and Freakazoid and Sean Gares wearing tank tops in summer, you know, being America's team, or it's the one that won the major. Right, the, the, there's a lot of people who have a soft spot for this team for one reason or another. Maybe they just like the logo, or maybe they know Cloud9 in other games or whatever, right? 
So I think this will kind of help with the uh, the fan base thing and maybe help put some of these players, you'll get them bigger fan bases. Because I think I was looking the other day, like Hobbit was celebrating getting like 60K followers on Twitter. And I know Twitter is not like a big thing that they necessarily use. But still, like Hobbit has won a fucking major, and he's one he's one of the best teams in the world, you know. So this might help the the profile of the team. I, I don't mean, know if he's the highest one out of them all. I'm pretty sure as well, yeah, like, by far. Like Shiro, 30k, Nafani's 25. Yeah. So you know. I mean, it's always going to be a problem for you to build a sort of a profile if you don't speak English, right, or if you don't make content and stuff yeah. like that. Then obviously that's something that we haven't really seen anybody do outside of um, Nafani, I would say, who has been doing a lot of like on broadcast interviews hobbit some of them of course as well but daphne is kind of like the personality of that team because yeah. you don't really see anybody else do anything you know so that's like it's always going to be difficult with that with some luck we're actually going to get cloud nine pushing them th towards that a little bit more as well because they, they are that type of a, a team you know who's going to do a bit more content around the team so hopefully hopefully we'll see that yeah, and, and when we get to have Naphne on the show, it was a great show, right? Like people yeah. we got to we got to actually talk to him. We, you know, he's well spoken. Very genuine. And, yeah, and we learned a lot about him and like even what he was saying about Shiro, right? Like how he said he would translate the interviews and stuff. So, but I'm sure like yeah, and this is the thing. This is why I'm saying like they just need like a couple of big arena events where someone does. A, if Shiro gets like a sick clutch that's so memorable, it'll just make on stage and the crowd roars. Like that makes Shiro immediately like it. It just puts his stock up in terms of being a fan favorite, right? It doesn't seem like a huge thing, but in terms of wanting people to cheer for them, I think it, it could help. And, and already having more eyes of Cloud9 fans there, it might help elevate those moments even more so. So I think it's I, a pretty good trade-off. Or maybe I'm talking shit, I don't know. Look, I, the one thing I am curious about is how this will reflect on Reddit because obviously there's that whole thing about them having, like, I don't know how many of the Reddit people have Cloud9 flares. And there's yeah. obviously been a huge Cloud9 fan base, fan base on, on the Reddit. So I'm curious about how this will affect things over there because that's going to be an interesting gauge yeah, I I don't really follow the flares. Was there like a not necessarily, they... a, but just in general, like people were always like whenever there was Cloud9 content, they would always go up on Reddit. It was it would always proper. do super yeah. well. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. like I'm curious about how if this team will follow that trend, e even despite them being Russian, you know, sure. if, despite mm. them not having anything to do with the history of the organization. <laughs> I don't think anyone's Someone... sleeping on this. Yeah, 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 I just saw that. I don't know if there's any sleeping on this version of Cloud9. So you are, this, just to make it clear, Sponge, will you or will you not? sleep on cloud nine full sentence reply I, I will not sleep on cloud nine there's a there's a fun like gag i wanted to do it where i um get cloud nine pajamas on a cloud nine bed set okay right <laughs> and physically sleep on cloud Pretty nine good. i'm sure we can do something with that in the future maybe there's something, a, a fun something twist I that liked, we can have something like actually was the, the jack uh, kind of interacting with people on on, on twitter uh the owner of cloud nine i mean uh, and he was talking about somebody was asking for the polos and for uh, yeah, like varsity jackets, and he yeah, said like, yeah. "Yeah, go sort sort it out." I don't know how serious that was. I'm guessing why not? Like, reasonably serious. Yeah, it's like part it's of their, kind of like a their cool, brand, I guess, right? Yeah, exactly. It's kind of like a cool. I don't know. You know, you saw some teams like combining team tags with like the previous name that they used when they were like without an organization. That's kind of like how it feels to me. You know, it's kind of yeah. like a nice sentiment. I yeah. think the interesting, not the interesting, the only unanswered part is like where is this team kind of gonna play from what's their what's you'd their want to keep them in europe right? home base gonna be and has to be europe right and there is some talks on twitter among some some people about like oh they're a north american brand we should consider them an american team like they're, they're <laughs> not going to be competing in north america they're not gonna they're not gonna get like five russian players American visas right now. I don't think that's reasonable at Plus, all. Plus, why would you want to make them worse? Like, I don't Plus, mean that in like a why would you way. Go there? Yeah. What 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 purpose does it suit? The team. Yeah. If anything, Cloud Nine aren't part of the 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 Blue Agreement teams who have to be there for, yeah. for yeah. a while. So that doesn't make think... a lot of sense. Probably no. European base somewhere. Maybe yeah. a maybe a Belgrade. You know. And yeah. That's it. I don't know where, but I'm sure that they got the connections to do so. Yeah, I just but hope it, that they have like really, really good support, and it's not like one of these, you know, just set and forget kind of things where they're in for you know just thicker know, money and north, whatever. To be honest, I mean, but we heard like Stiko like say nice things about Cloud Nine. We had him on the show, yeah. and we spoke about that time. I'm not, very not implying sure. anything about Cloud Nine. Just saying. Would, would you want to nice. add them to the list with the NIP and Astralis prop? <laughs> <laughs> not yet. We don't need any more. Teams. <laughs> we don't need any more teams on that on that list. All right. Um. Anyone else got anything they want to say with Gambit or with, I guess, more with Cloud9 or with the players or anything reflective around Still this? Still so weird to see the logo. It, it seems, like, seems like I'm in the like the wrong year on the ranking. It's like, oh, Cloud9, number three, what's going on? Yeah, it's a bit curious. 
Okay. Uh, all right. Let's. This is like 2018, actually, kind of phase number one, you know, and, and like favorites. That was a okay. This oh, was funny, actually. Who Reddit. said that? There was Somebody a comment said, on Reddit about it. Someone probably tweeted about it as well. No, it was like a tweet. It was like a meme tweet or whatever by I forgot what was the name. Uh, Midnight CSGO. There you go. It was like uh, when you're Jack at the end and you hear Face Clan are favorites to win a major again, and there's like the Cloud9 like somebody holding an axe with a Cloud9 logo behind Face. You know, that's imagine kind of if it fun. happened with this player's team on Inferno. That yeah. would you know, be more, probably more baffling because their Inferno, it ain't, it ain't too hard to drop. <laughs> uh, okay, let's jump into uh, the next piece of news. Heroic becoming a Blast partner team. So that means MIBR are no longer a Blast partner team. Did we know that was happening before it was just announced that Heroic no, were in? No, I didn't. I just fucking blindsided yeah. me. I was like, I holy didn't shit, didn't hear out. anything about it. Like, I, probably a good thing. I, I guess probably a good thing for both sides. We always talk about Tommy Lerpus being a savvy businessman. Do you think that obviously not getting a lot from being in blast like i mean apparently apparently this wasn't even like necessarily a, a move from the from like the organizational side but more from like the ownership structure of igc which is i don't know just like the high like a higher up decision who 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 made the decision to to sell okay. the spot uh, even tommy had a comment to Luis, i want to say okay um about this um yeah I, I would have to run it down to to see exactly what he said but it was something along those lines that it wasn't necessarily a you know the organization's decision okay interesting yeah, I guess like if it's one of these things and they this is the like when you look at some of these companies, I don't know where the money's coming from, right? But let's just speculate here for is this another one of these like VC venture capitalist type deals over there at, uh, at that or are we pretty much, I think. Yeah. Okay. I don't want to get into business talk when I do that. Yeah, that's the, like about. I don't I don't see into like a lot of the over ownership structures anyway. I just like I'm just paraphrasing what he said. Yeah, I okay. think I think just looking at them IBR for the past three years or whatever how long they've been in and blast for two years i guess that's how long the the whole thing has been going on they've done fuck all they didn't even feel like real teams in 90 percent of the games so like but they still no, had a spot right so i guess yeah. Like, the, yeah i just i just want to say it's like no no loss doesn't feel like a loss not even from though the competitive no, standpoint yeah no, so yeah. from from that from that side doesn't really amount to much i think they did comment on it saying that they were in danger of losing the That's, spot yeah based on their like performances which which is something that hasn't been mentioned that exists uh in blast like in their rule set and part for partners so the the call, call was also kind of you know we could just get kicked out and not get anything, or you could sell the spot to someone else and make something back from it. So they went for for that. So yeah, yeah which seems like a pretty good call. Um, I guess sense. everybody wins, right? Like now we Hope definitely we get better teams for Blast. Yeah, yeah, and we'll get more opportunities to see uh, Kadian versus Glaive as well, right? <laughs> so uh, every, everybody everybody wins, and in Denmark, oh, yeah. so it's the perf it's what we need. Like that's actually what they need. That just sells itself. Everybody's already buying tickets right now for Blast Copenhagen later in the year. Because they will know that they'll get to see that hopefully on a stage. That would be fucking sick. Even if they just have to manufacture that somehow. Let's get it happening. Um, Wild card and invite. Let's go. Yeah, you know, do the old uh, yeah, the, the old early the pro VP. league VP special do the before uh, you know before things change a little bit. Um, yeah, but I think yeah, it's good for her, right? And that's about it. I don't really have too much more with yeah. it. Like, aren't they? Yeah, like that's good. Yeah, I mean, we're better. We're better off. They're better off. The tournament's better off. Like, you know, it's kind of. Kind what of we want to see, the, right? At the moment, pretty much, yeah. So we want to happen with the EG spots, for example, right? Them to go to someone who's a bit more competitive. That's kind of what we're looking for. Yeah, pretty much. So yeah, I guess that's about it with this topic. Do we want to keep moving forward? Let's go. Yeah. All let's right. Go. Before we get into uh, the final piece of news, uh, I made a tweet uh, last. Was it last week? I think it was last week. I made a tweet like in the middle of last week, talking about um, a live HL TV. Hold on, clap it in now. Confirmed show uh from like a, a bar type environment or something similar like actually that. all right whatever uh, sorry i yeah what did you want to go to no it's just uh, i kind of like had a thought about blast and russian teams and their stance uh, around that yeah it was just like a, an idea floating floating around my head Wait, you like they did because they did say they were back they were gonna well they just haven't invited or they pledged not to invite any russian teams not necessarily saying that they banned them but obviously you know if you if you make decisions not to invite any of them and then that's going to be a problem right i'm just curious about whether cloud nine potentially were in this process of, of buying that slot because blast did say that there were other part, parties that were interested and in, and in both in csgo and not so i'm curious about if, if cloud nine ever entered that process and if you know that might have been a, a factor but it's just a yeah doesn't really matter i think it'd be the same thing with the flashpoint conversation there right like if they were if well 
you're saying if they enter the process for bidding right. for one of these spots, right? Yeah. Because I guess you'd have, but like if they, the, it was like you were in the blast or ESL camp or both, uh, or you're in the flashpoint camp, right? The only overlap was MIBR with flashpoint and blast, right? Pretty sure. I don't think there was any I, other names. I'm not super sure, but probably, yeah. Yeah, I feel like, because I know that some of the other teams played it up, but yeah, it'd just be curious because that might be the same thing as like, we were talking about the spots and being like, oh, maybe just like a fuck, you don't need it. That's what I was saying about yeah. Blast before. If you just win. Well, in Blast, it's much more, much, much, much more difficult to enter it. It's not like it, you you just get in there by being a good team, you know, especially yeah, because you win in a they have event. a much, yeah. I mean, they just use have to have to go through the showdown, and now it's that that's actually a really fucking difficult process. Yeah, like we actually don't get that many teams in, so yeah, it's not yeah. not as you know the sixteen team ESL events where there's obviously a lot more space. Yeah, it'll be an interesting. It yeah, look, I, I'm sure we'll see what the intentions of Cloud Nine are in Counter Strike probably over the next couple of months. But they'll act pretty quick, I imagine, if right. that's stuff that they want. Um, okay. So let's jump into talking about this live show idea. So I tweeted about it just to gauge some interest. Turns out there's quite a lot of interest. Uh, oh, here we go. The tweet's brought up for everybody playing at home. Uh, no B. Tannen's allowed. He'll be banned. Uh, and any of his friends. And B. Tannen, mate, I'm following you, mate. I fucking sniff or aired out on the forums. I'm here just having a look all the time. And you were in a thread the other day talking about your face at Elo. And you only have 700 face at Elo. <laughs> and you're out here talking shit about me. You only have 700 Elo on face it. You're saying I'm a bad play by a, a black, bad color commentator. What the fuck? With 700 ELO. What the fuck? I mean, that's, that's worrying. Can't you even get boosted to like 1K? Yeah, I don't know why he's coming at me, man. What's the default ELO on face it? I think uh, it's I don't more. Know. It's like, is it the level, level four? I, I think it's like 100. No? no, actually, no, never mind. It's, no, it's, it's a level four is default. That's around like 800, I think. I got no idea. I just don't know why he's coming at me, man. Like, now I've got to tell the world about his ELO. It's like, fucking. Anyway, uh, we're talking about doing this live show, right, in Antwerp. Now, The I can give you guys what day it will be on um, because there's only one day that's possible for it to be on. Where's my fucking paper? 18? The Wednesday, right? Yeah, Wednesday. Just the day Wednesday. before the qu first quarter final, which yeah, is yeah, the yeah. Thursday. Yeah. Yeah. So it'll be, it'll be Wednesday. So obviously, it's one of these things, unless you're living there in Antwerp or you're actually there for the entire uh, uh, the entire playoffs, which is the only time I believe you can spectate. Uh, uh, then you're going to have a hard time being there for the show. It's not something that we can position on the weekend during the games or after the games or whatever. It's something that we would normally do uh, before the show, uh, before the playoffs, sorry, kickoff. So that's that's what we'll be doing. So it'll be done on, on that Wednesday. In terms of start time, we'd probably keep it about this same start time of 8 o'clock, but we might have it so that people can, if you want to arrive a little bit earlier, because I think the plan, we're, we're starting to narrow down the location now. Uh, we need to work out all the other particulars. But um, yeah, the idea is just to have three of us maybe get some guests in uh, have a bit of a live audience do some interactive stuff uh prof's having an idea here where we we what what was the raffle you were talking about prof i think uh, start some people um get out of ban free card i think yeah that would, we wrap that, one of those off yeah like a big one like a like, like a, a huge check. one and you need to okay. bring it to Odense to check it in to uh, to get unbanned or you need to find jonathan e personally and give it to him it's like that's, Waldo, a, that's, that was a, that's a joke e. because he <laughs> he's not a, he doesn't exist so but yeah we should we should have a little bit of a look right we should have a little bit of a look about uh just some fun stuff we can do with people uh and in terms of we uh, we haven't like nutted everything out yet we need to get on this this week because it's going to come really really quick um but we have like a, a space that we're looking at where we could probably fit i don't know like i think it's like 80 people yeah i think they said, said but, like yeah 80 people but yeah. we'll see maybe a bit less and uh, the idea would have it at a bar with or a pub or science people can have some drinks and you know we can we can just be a little bit more relaxed about it and yeah do a show like that uh it's going to be difficult for paul lucas who i can imagine from a technical standpoint is going to have a bit of a nightmare but uh all in all it should be some fun and it's something that we've been hoping to do for a while so we'll see if we can we can pull this one off um, do we have anything else we want to mention about it now? This is kind of like a soft announcement for no, us. No, that's it. it. Okay, cool. Uh, we'll spend some more time on it and, and get some details out to you guys over the socials. Uh, all right, let's get into this N1 moment. Now, Prof, you're normally in charge of all these fun things. Nice one. Number one, the moment. Uh, what have you picked? The moment, uh, we got like two moments, I think, that kind of stand out in terms of just the hype that happened. One was the one was the Bad News Eagles moment, kind of. Kind of crazy. I think the craziest celebration that we had, uh, and kind of adds up to the whole hype that they had as as players and the sentiment that they're the you know the underdogs that could have done it and they did it. And it's, it's a very fun, interesting story. 
um especially the last minute I mean the the comeback against sinners to <laughs> to close it out on inferno probably shouldn't have happened probably people Sinner... are spamming audio right now i don't know if we're muted no nah, um, we don't need the audio i think it's, no no it's i fine. don't know if we're muted oh or... is it the audio on the on the clip I well think. they're all spamming oh, no okay. i think it's audio on the clip not all right not i didn't us. realize they were being such animals tonight sorry okay. sorry guys sorry for interrupting you okay i mean it, that was that was the amazing moment i think you have like the the other side of of the whole thing like a flippy flippy floppy boy right there but uh what the saw overtime uh, overtime game game against the outsiders <laughs> and uh, the last second defuse from james which is kind of, just kind of shows last two milliseconds yeah yeah it just kind of shows how cs uh is a game of like the the smallest margin how like some of these things can change the just like the history right and uh the legacy that people have and uh what what foresaw a Portuguese team getting to the major, what that would mean for the country versus, you know, the Kosovo Albanian guys getting there for the first time. So it, it just, yeah, it, it's it's crazy. And this is why we watch CS, right? Yeah. So just to summarize the first one there, because I think you were muted while we were talking for that first bit, it was the Bad News Eagle celebration. Mm. And the second one was the crushing saw round, rather, which, uh, I guess you get to see like the, the highs and the lows of all the emotion of all of this, but that was what was on display at the RMRs, right? Like emotion at an all time high. And, and we're going to go in next when we start talking about the, the RMRs a bit more detail into like maybe why that was when we talk about the format and stuff. But um, yeah, I, I think that one of the questions I have is do the bad news Eagle guys get fined for the equipment that got broken? Cause they don't have a salary. So where, where, does that come, where does that come out of? Right. I'm curious if they got fined for that. Cause uh, like, obviously, yeah, the good They're stuff for celebration. Money, you know, that's, yeah, uh, it's that's okay. true. That's true. Um, and it's great to see them qualify, but I, my immediate thought was like, holy shit, the monitors, like the headphones, oh my God, like that should, that shouldn't cheap. Like immediately that was my thought there, but it, it's obviously like great to see that raw emotion and that type of celebration for it. And, uh, then on the other side, like the heartbreak, like watching that round live, like that was a super entertaining, entertaining game of CS, right? Like how was that one from home striker? <laughs> for me, uh, had a bit of an added, uh, added sadness to it, you know, being from the same yeah. country as sinners. Uh, yeah, I mean, it was crazy just the contrast at the end, especially, right? Because of, yeah, I mean, the whole turn, like with the, from like the, who, whoever was in pits, was it one Flutter? I think so. Uh, but either way, like it's, it was a, uh, it was a rough moment to take in that moment, in that uh, last round for sure. Cause I saw it coming too. Like it was like 14 10, and I saw sinners being a bit lost in terms of, you know, they were trying to get out of, of apps, but they got smoked in the last 20 seconds. They didn't know what to do about it. They just like, but Bad News Eagles actually did a really good job, you know, just keeping them, keeping them behind smokes until the last, like, you know, 30 seconds when they just have to make a decision. And it's always going to be chaotic in those situations, unless you're a team that really does well under those pressure situations, you know, and Sinners are obviously not that, they just don't have the experience. And so like, that's just what's going to happen, right? Like you're going to struggle on the T side if you, let the other team, you know, keep utility down. Going yeah. into the deep analysis right here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just objectively, this is what happened. I was I was talking to some of the Bad News Eagles guys after the game, and uh, I was like, "You're all you're all choking." Everyone was choking. It's like, yeah, yeah. It was the game of who's gonna choke more, uh, and they choked more than us. Like <laughs> this wasn't a good game, but somehow we won. Uh, and I feel like that's kind of the sentiment. And these are the big moments where. It, everything kind of goes out of the window like everything you practice you know all of these perfect smokes and executes everyone's yeah. gonna fuck up so many things that is just about like keeping your calm in some of these moments and maybe making that some some stupid play that's gonna win you the round which maybe usually shouldn't and wouldn't be the play to to do yeah no for sure i i think that the the emotion was on show as part of the gameplay because mm. it was so for some of these guys like Bad News Eagles is the perfect example and probably the one, like, even if we, if we talk about it now, I guess we just don't talk about it later when we get there, right? Um, but with this with this Bad News Eagles one, like for them being a, a, an unsigned team without an org, they're not giving the split of the sticker money to anybody, right? That's just them to split however many ways they have involved in their team, right? Whether it's six with the coach, maybe they have some other support staff that they want to pay or whatever, however they decide to do it. Um, but that right there, that's going to be interesting, right? And that's this... You're getting into the territory now, and, and and obviously we're not talking the same amount of money as a TI if you like get placed really, really high, right? But we're still talking like a lower TI placement amount of money from these stickers. At least that's what we've, we've come to assume, right? We're talking in the yeah. hundreds of thousands of dollars here, potentially, yeah. if not more. 
Yep. Um, I think it was closer to millions for at least like close close to a million for every like contender and challenger team. And I think Legends teams might have had like even a even about double of that. Yeah, we we don't know exactly what they're gonna uh, like what they're gonna do with the signature stuff yeah. as well. So if the signature stuff comes in, then maybe that would mean a little bit more. We don't we, we obviously don't know what Valve. And are also do. like the the numbers could also be different this time. Like obviously the last major was one that was the first after two years. And yeah. even though we had the RMR stickers in the meantime, you know it's it's not necessarily the same thing. And those actually reached quite a big numbers as well from what we know. So just in general, like it's hard it's always hard to predict these things. Yeah, for sure. I, I think that either way, though, right, this is why I was getting into talking about the model with uh, like TI. If they're able to, like, there's some teams like, who play in TI, right, who are unsigned. And like for them, that's like the biggest thing. It just pays their whole year worth of playing. That's kind of what happens here for Bad News Eagles. Like, you're going to mm -hmm. earn, if you earn a lot of money, well, a decent amount of money, split it of six ways or whatever they do. At that point, we're talking like they have their salary for the year that they earn by qualifying for the major. Yeah. They obviously don't have the same support, they don't have all that kind of stuff there for them. And, but they, especially uh, being from you know a country like that, it's obviously isn't that how OG started? What's right? Isn't that how OG started? Like it wasn't an org from TI industry? money. Yeah, like wasn't it just like it was like no tail and a, like, yeah, the players pretty much. And, I think yeah, like I'm not saying this is gonna happen with Bad News Eagles or anything, but I'm just saying like this is the, and this is like the model of sustainability that you like you can see because it's a tournament which that's what you get as the earnings right or part of it. With, yeah, with I think that's mind. this kind of leads us perfectly into the discussion about like the current format and the yeah. major qualifying stuff. Because me and you had this chat one day during breakfast, and I feel like we can we can talk about it from a couple of different perspectives. I think if you look at the major team list and you think about the teams that didn't make it through, yeah, there were a couple of teams in the top twenty that didn't didn't make the cut. Uh, yeah. Some of them, I would say, completely deserved. If you think about Fnatic, if you think about Entropic, they look like shit. Honestly. Yeah, they should so, not. They wouldn't have made it through even they, with a better. If you think about OG as well, like they they lost to teams that they shouldn't lose to, right? And you can't really think of them as brands and be like, oh, they should be here. Overall, yeah. I think that the team list for the major is really good. I don't think it's I don't think it's perfect, but I don't think the teams that are missing out are going to make this, you know, uh, uncompetitive major or or any of the teams that didn't make it through that they could contend for a top four spot. I don't think that was realistic. So if from that perspective, I feel like the qualification system is pretty good. But the issue is the sticker money is so fucking huge that the difference for, you know, Mouse not making it to the major and let's say maybe four is making it to the major. If we could, we could argue that Mouse is the better team and that they showed more, but they didn't have, they have like a harder run. That hurts you a lot. It's kind of unfair that they are not going to be rewarded the same way as, you know, a force will. Sure. Uh, so that's the issue that I have currently. And I'm not sure if this is something that Valve even care about uh, or that we should care about. But, but it's it, that, that's a part which, which I'm not super happy about right now. Okay. Well, let like let's. Wait, but, uh, I'm not entirely sure that I understand the argument. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say let's try and pin this down a little okay. bit. Okay. Um. So, with the buckles, for example, yeah. right? With the way that it, some of these matches would finish up, right? And and obviously this wouldn't have happened. Like we can run through the simulator and see how these matches would have ended up anyway. Um. If the favorites won, right? Even in hindsight, like let's like. We obviously don't have to run with all the teams that won because we would know how it went, but we could run and say, like, let's say that G2 didn't lose the opening game, for example. Right. right? Like, just some of these options here to see how it would have shaken out. But I think that some guy made a Reddit post about this, right? And and I was reading it one late night, you know, as, as you're scrolling in bed, reading all the negative things about you on the internet because you hate yourself. Um, and you, you're in there and you're reading it. And, and I was, I was, I didn't get stuck into it as much as I should, but it was something about there being a fault that has existed with, with it before where the favorite teams like the highest seed teams at the end of it end up getting matched like against each other like the highest team seeded teams remaining are the ones who are versing each other in that last round um now obviously some of it is like you shouldn't have lost your matches to you know the lower teams that comes into it but i think regardless it still would have been those teams facing each other towards the end anyway uh we should probably check that and go through the simulator to see but is that where you're going with this prof or are we yeah i mean um, among other things there's there's ways in which the system isn't ideal and doesn't get you all of the best teams and it's it's not like we're losing you know the top five teams because the system is bullshit because it's not uh it's just about like some tweaks could maybe be done for it to be better 
uh, and that we really have a, a better way of finding, you know, this, these like middle teams, you know, who is the seventh to ninth best team. Uh, I think in that way, we sometimes, the system doesn't really provide the best, um, the best results. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> I think people don't really to look too far with it. I mean, first of all, like the problem also is that the original seating that's, that's been, that's been the case for almost every time the, the system has been used because like the fault is from the start already, like you already have teams in brackets where they shouldn't be just based on, you know, them facing a team that they shouldn't be facing as early as they were based on original seating, you know? And obviously this time it was kind of the same because like the top uh, 16 teams were from the major and obviously things have changed since the major phase is now a favorite just to put, up, put an example while there were something like seeds eight or whatever i don't know what exactly what seed they were but something like seed eight because they there were seven other european teams in the playoffs and then they were just about missing out uh on on playoffs so um, that would have been somewhere along along, along the eighth and tenth seed you know and now you have the best team in the world on the on seed 10 potentially facing some team that they shouldn't be or like some other team in the top eight that's probably going to lose to the best team in the world obviously and it shouldn't be in the in the zero one bracket for example or you know so that's like it just First of all, it cascades into these more and more problems because you found these teams that even if upsets don't happen, they're just going to find in, find themselves in brackets where they shouldn't be in the first place. And so more matches that shouldn't be happening are happening. And then it's just, it's, it's Getting broken from the worse, start, yeah. right? Yeah. So, and, but how do we avoid that? that? But also it's just that I think people fail to, fail to realize how, what the, what the opponent's score does, especially when you get to the last round. I think in round three, I can see how people have a problem with it because the the, the sample size is sm so small that basically like a team ends up either on one C on like a two one or one two or like a zero two and I don't know exactly what it is two zero or zero two something like that. And it's always going to be that there are going to be multiple teams tied on that score in that third round because there's just not enough matches yet because everybody's played three matches and it's not going to be a different. There's not going to be a big difference. Uh, and so it's always going to go down to original seating anyway in the third round a lot of the time. So that's that's a big problem for, for from that standpoint. But if you look at but if you look at like round four and especially round five, where the, the the differences are much bigger because obviously some teams only play three matches because they went out early or went through early, and there's just going to be different much different scores between the six teams that end up in the two two round, right? But at that point, that score actually gives you quite a decent feel into how the tournament went because if you find yourself in the 2-2 match and you've you faced teams that are you know there are negative you know if you face teams that lost more than they won then probably you had a fairly easy route you know and they should that you if you look if you are in the 2-2 uh bracket despite facing uh pretty weak teams then you should probably be facing a stronger team right and so at that point you should stop looking at what the original seating was or what your original view of that team was but about their entire route and whether they even deserve that seed in the first place. And, you know, because like people have these preconceptions about teams that, okay, Vitality got this, were in the last round, they should be a big team. They should be making it through easily, right? But obviously they weren't. They were struggling in that tournament and they ended up facing a team that they mob, maybe a team should have gotten a, a, an easier matchup, but they didn't because Vitality just didn't really um, play to the level that they should have. Obviously they also had a diff difficult route, but, you know, it just all kind of plays into each other and I understand how it makes things complicated for people. Yeah, I, what if what if we ran cuz the thing is with what you're saying I understand like it it's a lot of this happens because of the results, right? I'm I'm just right now I'm just went through group B for example and I'm obviously using who I would have thought the favorites were going into it, right? Yeah. Like I have you have to use a little bit with some of these teams of where they were like seeded, right? If they were truly the favorite or whatever, right? Like, and, and I think some of the teams are so 50 50 that you're almost cost, uh, tossing a coin in certain scenarios. Like, mm. when you get, to, for example, uh, I don't know, like a spirit versus endpoint game, right? Like, something like that. Um, I, I, I just ran through, like, for group B, I just went through and did, did it again as if the favorites had won their opening matches. And then the way that, that it ended up for me was something like this for round five players, G2. Copenhagen Flames, NIP, and Ants had all qualified, right? Yep. In the in the and the, the final matches would have been Heat versus Bad News Eagles, Entropic versus Sprout, and Astralis versus Spirit. Like that they seems, all sound like seems entirely reasonable. reasonable matches, right? And that's yep. with like even a bit of using the event that just happened as ammunition to help gauge some of the results. And if, for example, G two didn't lose the opening game to Anonymo, and Tropic didn't lose the opening game to Bad News Eagles, 
right? Like the, the favorites will, and when they, when it went into G2 versus heat, they didn't, you know, lose on, on a mirage that came to 16, 14 G2 just won the game. Right. Or like those type of results that we're kind of more expecting, right. You know happen. what I was, yeah. You know what I was actually kind of playing. I was playing with a thought that maybe like, let's say we, we wanted to remake the qualification system entirely and we wanted to make it a bit more, um, a bit less region based and we'd actually throw everybody together, like play one. Yeah. 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 You know? I think that obviously, was eventually the goal, I thought. I don't know if that's necessarily... I mean, obviously, we've had this this system before, at least to a certain degree, right? We had eight yeah. teams uh, qualifying directly to the next to the next major, but then the rest of them had to qualify, right? So, um, But uh, the way I was thinking about it is because Swiss system was originally meant, or just the, the way it is used in chess and, and tournaments like this, where there's a lot of teams or a lot of players... Um, it is really good for that because it gives you a, a decent enough sample size and you just have um you just have more matches than you're supposed to have you have much bigger a much bigger pool of teams and so if you let's say you play to five wins instead of three sure. and you have all of those teams together like all 52 teams would be playing one tournament yeah, one yeah, yeah. group and then like once you get to five wins you go you're through once you have, have five losses you're out obviously yeah. there has to be like somewhere middle ground has to be you have to eliminate a couple more teams because it's 52 and not 48 out of two or out of twenty four, you know, whatever, and it's a, like an awkward amount of of teams. But like once you get to those last rounds, you're going to be able to solve that in some other in some other way, you know, throw them all in one group and then have them play it out for the last whatever spots are an offer, you know. I but you can play it this way when you have a bigger sample size, when you can run this tournament, and like with decent enough original seating, you are going to get most of the like at least the vast majority of the best teams out of everybody, every region, you know, yeah. to the major. And obviously, like this is a problem because of like whatever Valve wants to do with specific as well. regions. What's well, it what's also right? helps support the regions, right? Like that's, exactly. that's part like, of why I, they have the spots. Yeah, yeah. And I understand that, but at the same time, like we've all, we've already had this format before, right? Like where we yeah. could have yeah, different regions in entirely eliminated before, right? And that's yeah. not that's just not the case now. So that's like obviously they they didn't have a problem with it before, so I don't see why they wouldn't be up that, for doing but it. But that's now. now just become the challenger stage of the major. Like when I played major qualifiers against everybody else, it yeah. was the challenger stage of the major. Oh yeah, that's that's fair enough. So like this is the step before that, right? I th yeah. yeah, I think the logistics of having like fifty-two teams uh, make it. Very oh yeah, difficult it would be a nightmare with fifty-two <laughs> crack rooms. And, but I like the idea and everything. Right. That would be that would be the difficult part. I think. Uh, one i was looking i was thinking back to an uh, to a major which had like a good group stage really well seated and i when i think about it i i'm looking at it now and i it's very hard to remember exactly how the tournament went but i think i am katowice 2019 used the, the player, live elo, the player right? seating the right? player seating plus the live elo and i think the player seating part will never work for valve i yeah. don't think they'll allow that anymore because People can fuck around with that and be biased, uh, which I don't think is a great thing. But I think the live ELO part would be better than Bukholz in terms that I think with Bukholz, the problem is, especially that third round, which I feel is far from ideal, um, because it goes from only using the seeding, initial seeding for the first two rounds into third round, only using the results from the event. And I think with the live ELO, you had a combination of, you know, the the elo and the the elo got updated after every round mm. and then you had like a smaller smaller jump from you know fucking navi loses one game and now suddenly they're like third seed or fifth seed in the in the in the third round which they probably shouldn't be so i think that would be maybe a cool thing if you could use the initial seeding to set up an elo and then use the elo instead of yeah. book colts um and it would be also more fair in terms of, you know, it's not the same thing if you lose to a team that is, you know, if you lose to Renegades and if you lose to, I don't know, Force or you lose to yeah. Mouse, uh, because their initial ELO would be lower. So you, you would also lose more for that loss in terms of it just being, instead of it just being a minus one as it is in Book Yeah, I have to say that. Yeah, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, I just, I just think that could be uh, a better way to do it. Yeah, I have to say that was that was pretty elegant in terms of also if you look at how it would work for this tournament, like we had the biggest upset possible in the first round, right? Like we had Anonimo as the, Anonimo. by yeah. far the lowest seed against G2 as I don't know if they are, yeah, yeah, they were they must have been the, the highest They're seed the because Navi game, was right? in the yeah. other group. Yeah. Um so uh, obviously that happens in the first game and under that Karovica system where the 
the ELO basically accounted for you making a big upset and it just like averaged out your your ELO to like a better like an anonymous would just go into let's say two rounds from there you they would they would have maybe like a seed eight instead of sixteen you know if if, mm. if they if they kept it, like if they lost the next two matches or whatever like they would they would improve their their seeding as they went through the yeah. tournament you know so like instead, that obviously has instead of anonymo been... played bg2 then lost to the players then beat the tropic then had to play ants and spirit again yeah. Yeah. to, like to go them. through like yeah, yeah. you could only say that the spirit game maybe wasn't you know the worst but all until that it's like what what are these opponents like why am i why am i getting why, you am, I getting, fucked, why yeah. is my reward for beating g2 playing against players next yeah it's like right. yeah yeah but it makes sense, right? That they go into the next stage is still one of the lower seeds. But it did, like I guess that depends on how much how much should this affect. Like that's the question: how much yeah. should it affect the next round of seeding? Um, yeah, I I don't know. Like this is what what I'm saying is, I I just went through and I did all of these because striker. What you're saying about so many results went wrong that it caused the matches at the end, and it is crazy. Then when I go back and if I do it, that the final matches seem reasonable. Like Heat versus Bad News Eagles, and Tropic versus Sprout, and Astralis versus Spirit all seem reasonable. Yeah, like. They don't seem unreasonable. Yeah. But I mean, we had it would have been teams it that overperformed looked, and some that underperformed. Yeah, I mean, I, I assume in the first one it would have looked a little bit rougher just because the competition was just much stronger there. Yeah. When we had a much harder time picking like who even the best state teams were, basically we had to pick ten that we were kind of like considering about like which one of them are actually going to make it through. So like Group B was definitely like there were just like the last two spots were just all up for grabs. Like we had no idea who are those like let's say six teams could have made it. You know, we actually nobody actually saw Bad News Eagles. Do that, but you know, yeah. um, it's just one of those big up, big upsets, big upset runs. Um, let's. This is what we're gonna do, right? I, I, I we're gonna run some ads soon, not just yet. We'll finish talking about like our general thoughts about the system and and how the RMRs went and everything, because right now uh, we're actually still a bit more glued in on just the just the RMR, like just the Swiss system itself with buttholes. Um, but we need to kind of like step back a little bit as well, because this is the first time we've run something like this because before it was the point-based RMR stuff where we had like multiple yeah. and they would all add together. Do do you guys prefer this? Like, do you like the little test of like, okay, so just make sure everybody's in form, like you can qualify and then you go into the major. It's only two weeks later. Like it's not a lot of time. Like this is, it's, it's, it's pretty quick turnaround time. How do we feel about this, the system? Do we like it? Honestly, I don't mind it. Honestly, I thought I might. I, I, would I prefer it over the other one. I didn't like I, the other one I much. dislike it. More. I thought I would dislike it more. I think, I think it works fine. I, I just want like better ways to decide these, you know, who's going to go in as legends, who's going to do this and that. It should be matches. But, it should never be seeding for that. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Especially with how skewed the seeding can be. So I'd, li I'd like some of these things. Maybe we can even get matches between groups. I don't know if that's possible, like lo logistically, but th that's, that's the biggest issue. Like people talk about, oh, this is what I, I said this last year as well. And it pisses me off every time. It's like, oh, how can the qualifier for the major be this short? We need more days, bro. The major is two weeks. How yeah. how long can a qualifier yeah. for the major be? Do you want it to be like seven weeks? Like yeah. could just, just like every tournament, every day is going to be a qualifier. It doesn't make sense. And then there's open qualifiers as well that need to be played. So it has to be somewhat limited. You have to be somewhat reasonable in terms of what you're gonna what you're gonna propose and in that in the in that like time frame you're gonna lose some of the competitive integrity unless, you're Roth, not, yeah unless we do the circuit that we talked about where it was all connected and everybody plays with the same rules and it's cumulative over an entire year of then, different uh, if we do that we could solve all the problems yeah, we can probably be... cure every disease in the world if we made that happen <laughs> yeah yeah i think think every... about the power we must have to make that happen that would be insane global warming no longer a thing we okay, save the no. earth all the turtles and everything yeah nice. so yeah uh, that's just a pet annoyance of me when i see that every time being posted like please consider the consider the time because that's very important um but yeah i i, I think it's a generally an okay system but some of these things uh, are kind of much less than ideal i feel like one day maybe one more day for you know some of these european events or like a 16 team events maybe we just need like five days uh, to to figure out some of these details and and, and the spots like three O's and who's gonna go out and and stuff like that. Do Do you have a uh, any anything on that striker that you want to add? Because I I know that you don't like it how in round robins like it can be decided without matches. Is the feeling the same here that it shouldn't yeah. be decided without? No, like... I'm de like there's there's no discussion there from my side. I think that's that was really that was just difficult to justify really whatsoever. I was trying to trying to work out 
why other than log logistics they would do it this way and i feel like even logistically it wouldn't wouldn't have been that difficult to make it happen especially like i think it's just an oversight yeah because uh, like they were flexible once it was brought up right yeah, and teams yeah, yeah. petitioned for it like i think and i don't even think it's an oversight from pgl i think it's because isn't it valve who came up they, with the way is, these yeah. events yeah, yeah, be run is, so they didn't is, they didn't note it down right that that valve who put out a rule like a book of how we wanted to do things didn't account for it that's simple yeah, yeah right. just one of those things that wasn't necessarily covered I, I don't think that was actually set in the rules whatsoever. I could be wrong. I would have to go back and check again. To do with, but buck, obviously, with buckles? Yeah, just to do with it, uh, deciding like specific spots, you know, yeah. and, and like legends and stuff like that. Because obviously this is like, people have to remember, like all of these things Bob eventually have to sign off on. Like, it's not like people yeah. can just say, okay, we're now going to run a match for it. Like this is all, this is all have to be run by Valve. This is not on PGL alone, at least. So like that's there's all there's obviously some oversight from from that aspect hundred percent. I definitely didn't like it. Like that doesn't make any sense. Like especially if you're like they ended they ended up solving it for um for the Americas where they played the one match for uh, between a few and a MyBR. But if you go three zero and your team your seating is decided based on the teams you played, but you beat all of them, like you obviously didn't make any sort of mistake. Yeah, you went through the the system undefeated, and originally they it would have been just decided based on seating you know so that yeah. that would have been really really stupid so yeah, yeah which, that's i i think as well we have lens in the chat and we had uh jack from cloud nine in the chat before so we got some big visitors oh, in here this evening nice. uh but uh, literally lens is, big lens is talking about a potential player for first place because of prize money i think that they should have just equaled all the prize yeah, money out yeah. for her like all the legend first, spots gets this much yeah. yeah i don't think we needed like a dick merger and competition who comes first because it's just it, like the prize money is the only thing to play over and why do we need a the, the prize money is qualifying in that position, right? Yeah. So I, I think that they should have just equaled it out. Legends get this much, uh, challenges get this much, contenders get this much, and if you didn't get any, if you didn't qualify, you don't get anything, right? Like that that makes sense. Makes yeah. sense. Like I think that's one little adjustment that they probably could have made right there. Um, what else is there? Oh, I think with the Asian RMR, I think that like a region that is so big, go look at it on Google Maps, guys. Go look at it on true, go look at it on true size, guys. Like it would do a lot for the region if Valve could facilitate eight teams, yeah. not even sixteen, just eight. Like just facilitate yeah. eight teams. Like you could even you could fill sixteen. And I'm not saying the quality of Counter Strike is going to be good, because the quality of Counter Strike of some of the RMR games that I did were not good. We'll talk about that soon. But you're going to if if it's about giving opportunities and trying to help a region, that would be something that would would be helpful. Right, yeah. having more of them get to play against each other more often under that exposure. It, maybe it's still only ten thousand viewers, but maybe we find more diamonds in the rough, like a car yeah. right? Yeah. Like, but uh, it's also online, and it's just like you get all these teams together, and it's not just like you know them playing online against like regional competition, and then you know if they don't make it through that, then they just tough luck, you know. So that the, that's like the biggest problem I had with it because like it's really difficult to to disperse Asia into just four regions, you know. It's yeah. like I was. I was actually talking to PGL about it because they were just trying to figure out how to fit it into four spots, you know, and that's, again, something that they probably have to um, comply with Valve about, you know, that they probably said it was just going to be four teams, you know, they have to figure out how the slot distribution would look like. And obviously, like, it's fucking impossible. Like, it's like, you're always going to fuck up somebody. Especially in such ping disparity regions. You can't, yeah, exactly. You can't like, even play so qualifiers among half of these teams that are fair or like half, you, it can be like, like some of these things that they they do in Asia is like oh you play one one map on this server one map on this server and yep. then third is a coin flip it's like that's unreal that's unheard of in Europe right that's why it would be fair to have more spots and another reason why it would be fair to have more spots especially like two spots for China two spots for uh Australia, Australia yeah, yeah is because their two best teams could be better than every other team yes. in Asia like a rare atom could be better and Tyloo could be better than anyone else. Renegades and order could be better than anyone else. And then you're like unfairly not even giving a chance to the second best team from Asia to beat everyone else in the region and have like two representatives. Um, so that sucks. I agree. I agree. I think that this is something that I don't even think it would be that hard of a conversation to get Valve on board with it. Yeah. Like I don't, yeah. I don't think it would be that hard of a conversation because yeah. if they're already running the qualifiers and they're already paying for the flights and the accommodation for Valve to add another four, four teams, or even if, even if they said 16, like that would be like a godsend of some variety, right? But even if they said six, it still wouldn't be that fucked. Like it, it just wouldn't be. Um, and, and it could be something that would help 
those regions because it would happen twice a year. It's a big event. It gets their name out there as smaller teams from smaller regions. It would actually do a lot, right? And and it, that's the thing as well that people have to realize. It is a lot of regions. It's not just Asia, right? It's the fucking Philippines and Thailand and all of these places, right? Like I remember playing against a Vietnamese team. Like, I, you know, and we don't even get to see these guys anymore in a land environment here. And crazy this is, guy, right? Was a yeah, crazy guy. crazy guy, exactly. Yeah. Fuck. This is this is the thing I just think. The beast um, from the east. And even yeah. even if you wanted to, you know how I've spoken about North America or the Americas being the rest? Like, so fuck that. For the major cycle, let's just say the rest could be, you could have a, a South African team go, right? Yeah. You know, there's some niche, more niche regions which don't have an opportunity, which then could go there to compete. And sure, we would still have to, it would, it would be a lot of teams, but only few spots, but it makes sense for that region, right? Like, it's not like we're giving away eight spots like we are on the European side of things or six spots like we are on the North American side of things. We're still going to give away two spots, but it would, it would help all those underling teams so much more. And I know that's not a consideration for most of our viewers. I'm sure it is for some of our more niche viewers from those parts of the world, but you build those heroes from the country and you show that it's possible. This is why it was sick because like WCG was like almost every country who wanted a license or had someone to pay for the license could do a WCG or an ESWC. Like I think having that back would actually do a lot. Um, so maybe a conversation, maybe we can, we can chart something up. We can have a chat with Valve. We can shoot him an email. Maybe we can find a presentation. We can get Blair on here to be the, the leading uh, expert on Asian Counter-Strike to help us on out. Like there's, there's definitely something to be said um about that and and what we could help with the growth because there's a shitload of people there as well there we go uh, we yeah. well here it is for before the next major cycle we're gonna make a big article featured uh guest appearance from blay who's gonna just like write down everything how it needs to how how we need to run it and then valve is gonna look at that and see like oh someone did our homework for us this is amazing we love this and they're just gonna copy that and nice that's gonna work. that would be great that would be really good actually I yeah. think that'd be fantastic. Just because so, even back in the minors, I used to play two Aussie teams that to play in those. Remember, like when Immunity would mm -hmm. come over, or you know, like there there was there was multiple opportunities there. All right, um, I'm waffling on a little bit here. Okay, so we're looking back at it we're, now, Striker. This is where we need you from the main viewer perspective because you're at home. We were obviously there uh, on in, in person on site, kind of seeing yeah. how it was all moving and shaking. But as a viewer from home. For the RMRs, which is just the qualifier for the majors, I want to make that clear for everybody playing at home. This is event, an event that doesn't get a lot of shine, which it should. Um, like I think that it can be propped up there. It's the most important qualifier of the year, right? How how was it from a viewer perspective at home? Was it palatable? Everything you needed? Uh, broadcast wise, I think is if you if you mean that, uh, I was actually pretty happy with uh, how it went from from the broadcast perspective. I liked um, shocks coming in for the um, for the European side. Um, and like, it was just, you could just tell that there was a bit more narrative work and then like a bit more prep work on the desks and stuff like that. That was a good, uh, that was a good addition. I, I mean, I can see that she puts a lot of work behind the scenes and stuff like that into what she wants to talk about on the desk and stuff. So like, that's, that was one thing that I definitely want to pick pinpoint as probably the best addition in terms of, you know, something that somebody we haven't necessarily seen too much on the, on the CSGO scene. So props for that. Props to her 100% because she clearly does the work. Like that's there's there's no way she doesn't. And like everybody, you know, prof has been saying that the same like in the uh, uh, behind the scenes and stuff like that. So um, really happy to see that. In terms of uh, just quality of the broadcast, that I, I actually didn't have any real annoyances. Like of course technical issues here and there, but like far from what prop what people had a problem with at the last yeah. major and stuff like that. Clearly this was the, this was just better around better ran and um yeah not no ask, real door issues can i ask you some pointed questions then because yeah, sure, i'm kind it. of just grabbing things that i saw people talking about on Reddit yeah, on the forums i saw a guy bringing up the accelerated schedule um but i yeah, saw right, it from so. both sides i saw some people going oh fuck you know i wanted to watch this game it was scheduled for this time and i woke up and it was it was, yeah, it was yeah. already two maps in um there's some people like oh, i love this is games just keep going like there's obviously going to be varying opinions yeah, yeah, yeah. on that but th what did you think of the accelerated schedule i guess Look, it's different from, uh, for you right yeah that's the the thing is like it's always going to be different for 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 different people because like schedules are just different right like people pe people will just not match up in terms of when they have time to watch but in general i am not a big fan of running games that far along that far ahead of schedule because like it's at least okay in esports we're kind of used to things being slightly delayed or slightly ahead and stuff like that it, the schedule is kind of just approximate 
But if you run, like, if a series ends, like, you know, the third series in the day, it starts three hours earlier than it should than it should be, then it ends when you're supposed to start watching it, you know? And that becomes a problem because, like, you, you can't you can't even approximately try to watch, like, one yeah. map out of a series if, if you're that far away from the original schedule. So, like, there should be some balance, like, you know, other organizers have in terms of, uh, you know, no earlier than times times you know start times for for certain matches especially like further down the line uh like at the end of the day and stuff like that because obviously at that point you're not worried about running way over schedule and you know running past midnight into matches and stuff like that you can wait you know a couple an hour on a desk or whatever like you want to want to fill time do you think that even for something like this is the qualifiers like it do you think something like this is it kind of ex a bit more acceptable because it's just the qualifiers Look, like, it, that's, that's it's a, that's certainly better question. than if it was the major, but at the same time, we saw similar stuff happen in Stockholm as well. I think the I major, remember. yeah, I think the major is going to be on the game schedule, right? That, I think yeah. it's the, the same idea. It's um, the same. It is the same exact system, right? Like at least for the for the for the Swiss, because it's like four days Swiss in like two rounds the first Swiss, day and then three days four yeah. days Swiss yeah. into four day playoffs, right? So yep. obviously, like the the general idea behind the schedule is going to be the same, but I'm hoping that they at least address the address these the, these like way ahead of schedule start times that i can see how like it's going to be an annoyance like if you're if you're a hardcore fan who's going to watch the entire day you're probably going to be much happier you know having it run in nine hours instead of 12 or whatever it is you know but like for for the major majority of people I, i'd say it's not going to be the case that they're going to be able to watch every day or, or every every hour of the major that and they just have certain they just have to prioritize you know yeah and so like i'd rather I'd, I'd much rather there was a bit more work towards uh, towards that area that was definitely one of my one of the the biggest points and also like if you think about na viewers like obviously you're missing out on on a part of audience just because you're running games until let's say you know if if a game ends at 6 p.m instead of 10 p.m like you na is just gone like they can't watch yeah i i think like obviously that that's all like conversation points if if viewership is the goal um whereas i look i I don't know. Like, I mean, I shouldn't know. it be the goal though? Like from a Valve perspective as well, they want as many eyeballs on the on the match, on the matches, on the major in general. Like you should be working towards having the the best matches on the peak times and I stuff like that. I think during the major, least. yeah. But this is what I'm saying about Course. the RMR. Yeah, like I, I don't know. Like I, I, I yeah. it's the same. It's the same thing we have. Like Prof just saying, how long can these events be? It's the same thing. Like, yeah, yeah. does it need to be to all the sets start times in a qualifier for a qualifier for a qualifier for a playoffs? Right. Like for right, you know right. what I mean. Like. Do they need, and that's the thing, that's yeah, where I mean, this is a bit of a nuanced debate. I think for a lot of viewers so that they can like schedule their days around it, yeah. But then we're saying, does every single, like, does that mean that when we get to the <laughs> online qualifier for this land qualifier, that they need to be run on, you know, a set start time or right. could they be on a right. schedule? At that point, you don't it, get into the same level of teams, right? Like, and you can can make certain concessions about that. But sure. it, like, I understand that. I understand I the think the, the flip side is also, you know, what Pro League does, for example, you know, they have their not start before X time, but that then if there are three games, and all three go into overtime third maps means that we're finishing after midnight yeah and then you know there are other people who are going to complain about that might not be the viewers might be the viewers but it might be also the csppas and the players and the teams and the managers and the handball coaches and all these yeah. guys so yeah. <laughs> the, the, um, the towel boys so you know it, it's um it's a tricky thing to balance, but I think also, yeah, the last days we were starting like super early because of some like logistical reasons, like moving teams in and out. So that's not probably going to be happening for the major. Um, no, those those early starts are like just fucking they slapped you in the face. Like it was like yeah, you know they were never going to adjust their beds. All right, hold up, we're getting up a little bit earlier. <laughs> they were uh, they they were definitely summoned. Um, I'm just trying to think if there's anything else overall. Like, obviously, we talked we touched on the HUDs last time around. Like, I don't have any yeah. issues with the HUD. Yeah. I think there's like certain things. It's like you know they'll adjust something that the community will say one day, and then the next day that's the thing that people are complaining about. Yeah, like, I mean the community out. and the community is outraging about the smallest things as they always do because like for for some reason whatever PGL does now is is shit. They could literally but just, like, but it happens. Literally, it's, it's cyclical, like right? Turn, like this. Like, they could save the planet and they'll be like, oh, but we all wanted to die anyway. So it's like, <laughs> there's no point almost. But there's always uh, there's always one TO that gets like the shit kicked out of them. That's just like ESL like, had it in like 2016, right? Until they yeah, turned yeah. things around. And like Blast had it when they were doing the exhibition match best of ones with so many teams playing at the same time. 
And then like PGO again, like from last year's major and that's continuing forward to now. There's always just like someone is the, someone is the shit kicker. That's what will happen. And then there'll yeah, be like yeah. a new thing that people will get outraged with the next TO and they'll do something wrong and then they'll be in the bad books. So it, it just yeah. like as much as, as much as I, I don't think it's, it shouldn't be on. I'm just explaining away like the mob mentality. They need something to like express their anger at, you know? Yeah. which is just the way it goes sometimes. Sometimes it's warranted with certain things, sometimes it's not, you know? And I feel like the level of expectation for something is is definitely why you see. Yeah. I think the one thing that I, I didn't even give this feedback to, to anyone at PGL, but here it is now. I think the one thing that was missing was more more interviews actually. And I know uh, Maui, Maui, done a lot of Maui did a, he did a great job. It, it wasn't about him, it's just like how they wanted to structure things and how everything was so fast that like, you know, as soon as you do an interview, it needs to go out right away. You can't really record it and send it over because by the time that happens dated, and that yeah. you, and that you fit, fit it in the broadcast is not going to work. But I hope, I think also that since they're having more people, more interviewers for the major, uh, that then they'll be able to, you know, do that like live more like post-match, just like a f brief post-matches because we didn't really get that many, uh, you know, reactions from the players. On on the flip side, it allowed me to shill for like HLTV and thus do interviews. So I did that. I pushed for those to be like embedded in the in the pre matches, if anything, if nothing. So I think it worked out anyway. Yeah, I I um I think that there's some stuff with that, right? Like I can understand why like when we do a media day, we try and like curate. This it's is how very, it tends to go for most. It's of them. very hard because like you have a media day and tomorrow already everyone plays two games and like the the expectations versus what happened can be so different that the interview is worthless yeah but th that's that's where the problem lies right like because you don't want to harass the players to do like more longer form things and and it doesn't all have to be longer form it can be short form stuff but like i know for me when we were doing all the stuff for pro league and the players are there in the same building like they're lit we're all sleeping under the same roof like to yeah. grab them for an hour you wouldn't think it'd be a big issue so when we like come up with a skit idea and like it would get either we'd come up with it and like it include a player or like someone from ESL would have a skit idea and it would include a player. I would always err just because like from my playing days, I'd always err on the side. I was like, they probably want to prepare for this match. You know, like I don't think that they would want to give up an hour here. And I never even wanted to ask the question because I thought that it would be, you know, it would just be an annoyance that they'd have to say no to. Because mm. I know for me, like if I know I have a high match, a high profile match going on, I like to prepare for it, I like to warm up, I like to go through it. And now I'm doing like an hour worth of funny skit content that is never an hour because the camera guy is fucking running late or the batteries died in the guy's <laughs> microphone or, you know, they left the lanyard so security won't let us through. So we have to, you know, there's always fucking something. Um, but yeah, I'm, I, I agree. Like, I think that's where like the mix zone stuff, the blast would do after matches was really good. Like, you know, like you walk out, there's a wall there. Someone asks a question, you fuck off. Like it's immediate. It's just fucking bang, bang. Like yeah. that could be one way to deal with it. I don't know. But I get, I get what you're saying. Like that, the main th I think we do need to try to put players and their image more front and center. Yeah. Like yeah, more it often. Felt, felt a bit, uh, this only came to me like late in the tournament. I was like, I barely saw the player. You, you see the players, but you know, you don't get the reactions. You don't get the him speaking. You don't like get that uh, emotional response to a great game and whatever. Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be long. Just, you know, how are you feeling right now? What's yeah, going big, on? Big, big blah, blah. win. You got these guys next. You know, yeah. it's something like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. It can be it, useful. Yeah. I think, the, yeah, yeah. More, more focus on that. And then that means we need less focus on the broadcast clown. Talking about us teams juggling, now? trying to. What do you think uh, about that? We need to wait. What did you say again? Okay. We're going to talk about some yeah, teams. Yeah. Yeah. I want to run these ads and then we'll come back and talk about teams. So, Dimitri, you ready? Let's roll, uh, roll the ads and we'll be right back and we'll talk about the teams. BRB. The Extrify M42 RGB, what a fun mouse with five colorways, lightweight frame and just 59 grams with a swappable backplate to suit your grip style, the sensor, the easy core, the smooth skates and driverless control for RGB and DPI is why you should check out the M42 RGB down below. Buy and sell your skins now. Easy, fast and safe. The best skin site credit card deposits and withdrawals, instant cash out methods. Get the best deals. Quick, simple, reliable. Bitskins.com.
Uh, we're back. Uh, that's the mid. I guess that's the ad break, like in the cinemas here in Malta. Like the movie gets to halfway, oh. and the lights come on, and you go buy more popcorn, and it's the most jarring thing because you're about to get that into exists. like, dude, it fucking it happens yeah. in the multi cinemas. I hate it. It's a thing. Every like in every movie. Time, there are there are movies like every movie. Long, let's say there's Batman. There are projections. You know, there are ones that have the break, and then there are some that don't have the break. No, they so all always have... pick. Oh, that's all sucks. of them have the break. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's like an intermission I've never been in a, to a movie that had that actually. I used to go to like um my my mom my mom's a dance teacher, so I'd go along with her to like a lot of theater things, like Mary Poppins or like a yeah, fucking yeah. tap dancing thing or some shit. And they would always have yeah, yeah that, but not that, in the that's movies. like an intermission thing. Like, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, that's to keep all the old people awake. Um, but in the movies, I don't fucking know. I think it's just to sell more popcorn. Anyway, probably. Um, probably. Let's talk about the teams now. Yeah, because I think we've done we we there's a good debrief. I'm glad we spent time on that though, because I think it's important for us to talk about that system because if it's going to be used again in the future, we should before, know now. Before uh, we get there, can I just uh, Jack just tweeted at I'm assuming his uh, uh, his merch person. Yeah. Can we get some C9 pajamas for Sponge? Oh no. Nice. You know, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah nice. the, I can the, sleep. The, could, the clip. That'd be great. I'll take some pajamas. I, I silky or or smooth, I, you know. I don't know. I'll take I'll take anything. Some boxes, some Brit, whatever's going. All right. Um. Yeah. Let's get into talking about the the teams here. Um. So obviously we're picking up where the European RMR started. Um. And it feels like it was a long time ago, even though it was only a week ago, right? It all started last Sunday, uh, and it's uh, it's only been a week and and two days or three days, or whatever the fuck it's been since then. So um. I, I think. I was, I was thinking of a couple of angles of how, how we could approach these these discussions here. Um, we could do it team at a time. Maybe we should just do it team at a time. Because right? yeah. they, they, highlights. We're, ne we're never going to finish. <laughs> no, no, maybe, yeah, right. just, maybe like, just highlights from like both uh, like East tournaments. Like I think each we can the keep European it like quite, quite quick. Right? Maybe, like, mm -hmm. For example, the, the favorites getting on through, like we should be able to get through that kind of quick. Because I wanted to put it into different buckets and, and, and maybe try and break down some of the conversation. Because... So I was do I was doing all the morning games. I didn't get to witness a lot of the like I wasn't commentating a lot of the later games, right? So that was stuff that I was watching in the hotel. Um, and some I missed. Some of the games I missed because I was casting other matches. I I couldn't watch both streams at the same time, right? But like my other than like a handful of matches that stood out, my overall feeling, my overall sentiment was it it wasn't necessarily the highest caliber of Counter Strike being played. And not from top to bottom, like obviously in some cases where it was two like massive teams going against each other, it was good CS when there was a lot on the line, right? But um, some of the stuff, it just, I don't know, maybe that's because I was doing like Quasar versus Unique and that kind of shit. Like for me, when I was watching a lot of the earlier games, like the quality for some of these teams was was actually pretty low. Like there's some some shining lights, some cool approaches, some interesting nades, but like it, I, we're talking about the favorites right now, but which of these favorites, like Na'Vi, Heroic, FaZe, C9, NIP, like of these names, how many of these are like full fighting fit for like a major trophy title? How many, are there many teams out of all the teams, the 24 that qualified that have that taste in your mouth, guys? Or is it like just a couple? Like, where are we at? I know like people have been saying, like, oh, it's just like jokingly, the event finishes like, okay, who's going to win the major? It's like, who the fuck is going to win the major? Yeah, like, I don't know. I don't, it has to be like Navi and FaZe as the, as the favorites. I think they are the, the two teams that are closest to being favorites to win the title and maybe expected to win the titles but i can easily see either of them i don't know about phase phase probably gonna make like semis for sure but for navi i can so see a way, one team in the world right now right i can see like, a way for navi to be like out in the quarters like i can see that happening easily so dude, especially uh, if electronic is blowing up his teammates like they was there like what the fuck there's like, a there's a bit of fighting there there's a bit of that fight. reminded me of navi with zeus in it yeah, it was actually kind of funny because like I was I wasn't actually there, but like from from you know our guys who are obviously watching them and just like trying to like capture some videos and photos of the teams celebrate celebrating as they go to the major. Like we even put put together this highlight reel of like the best photos from like the moments the teams qualified to the major. And I'm like going through everything and like the Americas one had so many like really sick shots, you know. I had to kind of like be really I had to really pick and choose between the best like five really great shots from one team, you know, and I get to Navi and they're basically arguing after the they whole qualified for the major, after they've qualified for the major, they're arguing about the game. And I'm like, what the fuck is happening? Yeah. I, look, I, 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 I know that obviously like tensions based on the situation must be pretty high, right? Like there's obviously some, some big conversations that are happening right now. Wasn't the thing that Navi put out was that the team has to relocate. Yeah. Essentially. Well, they, essentially yeah. yeah. They want, 
to not their players to not pay taxes to Russia, essentially. Yeah. So so with that, for three of their players who are Russian, like that's obviously a big talking point right now. Like there is quite genuinely cause for concern of the rosters of Navi and outsiders continuing after the major. Like that's how mm -hmm. I view it. That's that's my thought process on on two of those names, right? Like that there is there's real conversation on whether or not they will be the those rosters after the major, right? For this, this is the major, they're all gonna do what they can. But then after, I guess, if certain things don't start to change or like maybe if I'm a Yakinda or I'm like a kicker or a buster, like maybe I just want out of like, you know, this this org because of, of, of you know, how it's being dealt it's with right just now. I think it's just simpler to not be there. Like Yeah, for exactly. You, like, remove yeah. yourself from that entire situation. Yeah. So like, I think there's genuine cause for con concern in that regard. Now, like focusing back on Navi because they're one of our favorites, like, that's a concerning sign to see them because up until that point, it was all pretty you know, Katowice extremely somber, right? Pro League was, okay, this is us seeing them after all that. And then this was like, oh shit, like this, this is pretty scary. Like I, I worry about how the team is going to end up in the future. And I'm sure that yeah. uncertainty is part of the conversation. So going into the major, like it's hard to, like they could defile the odds and everything could be good and they can put it, you know, and, and focus on the game. But like that's it's a question now. Like and it was a question before, but it was you know more around some you know I I don't know. It's 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 weird. I don't know when they're sitting we're, for me. We're just seeing it in front of our eyes, right? We're seeing kind of the the cracks in the team, which are not related to anything in the server. So it's not really our our thing yeah, to to, comment, to kind of comment on. But you see the effects of it, and you see how. Like just because of it, that's gonna that's gonna translate onto the server, and they're not gonna be the Navi that they were. I don't think so at this major. Like I don't think it's even close uh, to what they were three, four months ago. So that's why I say like it's easy easy for me to see them crumbling in a game and and fall just like being eliminated early. So that's why I don't can't really think of them as a really big. T a title contender here. Yeah. But there's this like outside of the server that like, or well, the issues obviously come into the server, but like that's affected by things outside of the server, right? But like, if you look at them, they're one of the teams who are like complete in terms of their approach to the game and their map pool. Like we know they have depth, but we know that they can get unraveled emotionally because this is Navi after all. Like as much as we've yeah. tried this new Navi is like all fun and young and everything, it's still Navi with, with those issues there. And if it's bubbling over, it's fucking bubbling over. Um, but I still think like as a team, they're complete. So that's where like the conversation is hard. Like you can't say that the team isn't complete in terms of their approach, or their map pool or anything like that. I'm sure they've got like something up their sleeve in terms, I'm sure they'll probably, Blade was masterfully saving some strats and things that they're going to work on in these next two weeks. In terms of in-game, it's about can they keep it together? But who else, does any other team fall into that same bucket of being complete? Because I think like phase is complete, but Prof, you said you reckon you could see them going out in the semis or something like is that just I think I think they're worth semis, placing? No, I think like semis like worst placing. Yeah, I think, okay, yeah. think so they you need think to they're get, complete. I think they're the best shot like the yeah. best shout to win the title. Yeah. But it, okay, so I and I think a lot of people would agree with that like when you yeah. see the approach to the game the way it is right now, it feels more often than not that they're having uh it's it's few and far between when they're having dramas and it feels like they have a lot of weapons now. Like before with Olaf, they didn't have as many weapons. Like now if Rops isn't having a great game, and then Twist can be having a great game. And then maybe it could be a rain pop-off game or Carrigan be doing great on the entries or Brokey's having one of those games where... Because we saw some some games from Brokey this event where he wasn't looking fantastic, right? He was rough in a couple of the matches, but the team was able to pull through. I even saw like some discussions on on the forums about people saying, is Twist a support player now, right? Because he's doing, you know, a lot, you know, but like on overpass uh, for them, he's like I mean, playing B. Is, I feel yeah, like. but he's like, but he's a star level, like he's he's playing them like a star. You know, like he's getting yeah. a lot, you're getting a lot out of him in certain roles, but he's doing his part for the team, like face our team. And like mentally, I think only the old face hoodoo could be a problem for them. But then this is where like I throw uh, Cloud9 Cloud now into the conversation, Heroic and Copenhagen Flames into this conversation now. Like Heroic had a pretty strong showing and you could see like the way that Cadian was getting fired up and stuff. Are they a complete team? Like what do, do we think? I mean, we still we still know that they have cracks, right? Like sometimes they just do have these games where they don't look like this heroic that is just dominant during groups. You know, they just have this one of these series and just crumble. Like so across, you're talking like pressure. Once. I don't know if it's necessarily pressure or what it is exactly. I think it has to do something with it, probably. Um, but they just it, it's even like at points in group stages, like we obviously didn't see it necessarily in pro league where they were dominant or um, or even here necessarily, but just like before that. 
was it Bla- uh, like one of the blasts i think it was like one of those series against the spots i think where we saw them really at a weird spot and, and stuff like that so it's just a they just have some of these series where suddenly it's not the heroic you know I, either it's just like one some of the year like the timing play is not working out for them uh, and suddenly they don't really know what to do with it because they just become a bit too passive because like these plays haven't been working out for them stuff like this you know where they just get rattled during a series and with they don't really recover or they just don't have like Katie and show up, you know, and that's a problem if you sure. don't have your opera up there, you know. So that I think actually Kadian, like too many inconsistencies. That's that's definitely a part of it. Yeah, I think Kadian is actually might be the biggest kind of like a, a, a point of fluctuation, maybe alongside with refresh when it comes to like individuals of this team and how important they are in terms of how they're the, they'll perform at the tournament. You know, I know they play different roles, right? They're obviously both in game leaders here, but when we talk about phase, we, we know that Carrigan has to call a good game for them to win, but we don't think that Carrigan has to frag crazy for them to win. Right. right? So I don't even talk think about... Carrigan necessarily needs to call a perfect <laughs> game for them to win. Currently, currently that could no, be... No, it doesn't have to be a perfect game. It just has to no, call a good game. Like right? A confident game. game yeah, right? Sure. Like, he can't make any, like, crazy blunders or anything. Like, he just has well, to... Well, to be... Like, you still have... You know, you fuck up a call. You go into the wrong site. You still have Rops on the other side, potentially True. opening up the other side. Kids getting three kills low and, it, and just, like, giving you rounds for free because even what whatever you call, you know? So it's kind of... Like, he's he has some contingencies in place. Let's just call it that. Okay. Well, but when you compare that to, like, a heroic, right? Like, Stown now is producing more often than not. Yeah. Like, he's very regular in, in how much of a star he can be. I think it's more about, like, the second and third, right? Because I think Shush is... If Shush can be, like, that consistent rock, the backbone that they can rely on every time, and then Stown peaks are, like they're going to go up and down, right? They're not always going to be at that same level, but if he can perform as the star, it's about the conversation of who's, who's the the second, right? Yeah. Like, is it Tessa's? Yeah. Like, and then that's what the conversation is about Katie and his role. Time. That's the thing. Yeah. And, but that's, but that has to be the question for the team, right? Cause there's no doubt that all the players can perform, but right now what you're saying is inconsistency. So somebody needs to, or if they don't, it needs to be a combination of the three, but if we're not getting enough out of refresh and we're not getting enough out of Katie and on a regular basis, then, there can only be one. It has to be Tessus, right? Right. So that's where like this conversation. But I think that like, heroic in terms of like the prep that they do and the map pool that they have and the, the the more explosive approach they have to some maps, they have their style of the game. But the only thing that's not complete is the is the parts being able to do that all the time, which could also be part of the way that they approach the game. Right. Right. You know, like if it's a bit more flux, if it's a bit more Randy Brick, you know, you, you're not you you're making more assumptions in their play style because of how risk-based some of their play can be uh, prof what do you think about heroic yeah for me it's the same thing it's um group stages they're great all the time uh and then you go to playoffs and sometimes okay sometimes pretty shit uh and well, they don't have where... the online attack anymore though do you think yeah but but it isn't the big games and the arena games that they um under- but isn't that more choking than onliners like what i'm are not we... You're just putting the online. I did not mention online. Well, no, at because all. It's like, like you're putting. Uh, yeah, it's not on. It's not. They're not online because they are playing on lands all the time, and and even on lands that are without a big crowd, they can do they can do great things. I think it is about like Stone. Even for for a long time, wasn't this a super consistent player? Like he was good on and off, and they have this little dynamic where you don't really know who the second star is, who's gonna perform on the day, um, which makes them very good in some cases and then also very bad i feel like they're the team that has the biggest blowout losses when they shouldn't when when it should be a close game you know when it's a you know they face navi and like some quarterfinal and 16 6 16 5 and they're like the fourth best team against the first best team like it shouldn't be that big of a this this discrepancy in these okay. in the two lineups uh so for me, I think it also, yeah, I think the KDN situation is really difficult because he's not the best, he's not the top five opera in the world. He's not even probably a t- top 10 opera in the world, but you need to have him opting for this team to, to call on this team as well for this team to function. Uh, maybe you don't, maybe he could rifle as well. Maybe that's, maybe that's a solution for Heroic to become, you know, the best in the world, but it's, he just has a big role, which he doesn't live up to all like as as time goes on he lives up to it less and less i feel like 2020 so, and the online era he was significantly better than he is now so you're saying like for for the success of heroic if they were to be one of these complete teams it's katie and having more consistent impact yeah i would say so okay like because i'm just trying to boil it because i'm honestly trying to quantify in my head before going into this event who the favorites are and why 
right? Like right. the things that we're discussing right now around heroic, they can overcome within a two week period. They can overcome, or they could have a bunch of matches on the stage where Katie and getting fired up is like it, 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 it's a snowball, right? They're okay. able to ride that, right? Yeah, I think like, they. But- they are like at their peak. I think they are a potential major winning team. I don't see why not. Like we saw it even in Stockholm. Like they were really close to getting to the final. I mean, you know, obviously Navi at that point were probably pretty unbeatable. But you know, that was a actually sure. a contender a team. Crap. You know, at that yeah. point when they hit that peak, like we know that they are capable of it. But they we just haven't seen it enough. But that's the conversation, right? Like, so we're right now we're establishing those kind of boundaries. So we spoke about it for Navi and FaZe, who we would say probably are the, but then, but then I feel like you have to get in the conversations with uh, Cloud9, right? And where they place is still it's kind of weird saying that. Um, yeah. Better like, than players. So I'm just like I'm <laughs> yeah, throwing I'm players away, not going to mention that name ever again. And I'm going to Cloud9 directly. Yeah, that's easy. That's actually easy to do. But then like, so like Cloud9 kind of fall into that same bucket as Heroic, right? They came, they rose to power in the same time. They're having the same considered issues on stage matches. Like there's some of these things which I just don't like add up. And, and maybe it's like lost in translation stuff. There's two things that I want to talk about with kind of quotes from players. Wasn't it like Nafani again saying in an interview like there's no difference between land and online? Like, like after they qualified? I don't I, I know that somebody he, mentioned it to me in a chat and I was like, oh, has he said he that again? Had, he had a yeah, he had something of a of a similar sentiment about like pressure and all of these things. But that's but just then, not true. But then he also like went back on it a bit and and said that I think he said some stuff like that people have been kind of figuring them out a bit. I think that was also a part of it. Maybe I'm just like putting putting my thoughts into his, into his interview right now yeah. because I feel like that that's also part of it and then I, on the same side I think Hobbit said that the dust 2 game they had so much pressure when they were they playing against Astralis. Astralis right that was supposed to be you know 2-0 they beat, beat them on dust 2 and they qualify but like the communication everything everything was falling apart for them in that moment so I think they owned up to what they're dealing with in terms of sure being favorites, still big moments, big matches, that they're still not the team that thrives in that uh, in that environment. Yeah, and that's the thing. I think like eventually once they embrace that, then that's when they become like a championship contender team. Like they're obviously already a contender for the title if they get to play their game and their game works perfectly, right? But when it's not and you need Axar to step up or you need Shiro to hit that orb shot, right? Or you you need you need Nafani to find that entry, right? Like Nafani has that tenacity about him. And you see it, but I think that I think that he's battling with this. Yeah, this happened to me as an in-game leader. Like I loved getting fired up and yelling and like being, you know, being that kind of guy, right? That was like me as a leader. Now I'm definitely nowhere near as good of a leader as Nafani was. I'm not nothing of even the sort. But when he's that emotional figurehead of the team, he is the most emotional player, at least uh, animated wise, right? He's the most emotional and, and, and like it, it can be used as a positive, but when things aren't winning, it, it can be a negative because you're quiet. Right. And, and, and how that affects the team. I think that he's having the struggle at the moment with how to balance that. And once he works out that recipe, I feel like Kadian has a pretty good grasp on that. Like how to be motivational when the chips are down and how to be most motiva- motivational when he wins one on three, right? Like he has that kind it looks from the outside, right? I'm obviously speculating. Right. I think that Nafni obviously as a younger guy, Kadian has, so much more experience in that regard as just a human being than Nafani, right? Like just he's years older, right? I think that that's one of the things for the team. If Nafani can sort that out, it's not an easy thing to do. I don't know how you learn how to how to do that, how to manage that, what the best way is. And if you're thinking about it all the time, I had this problem. Like you're I know that, gonna overthink. Yeah, yeah, I know that Yam didn't like me doing it. So then it was something that I was conscious about not doing instead of just doing what I would do, right? And then like now I'm thinking about, you know, like that mind fuck and... Um, that's only things I've thought about years later in reflection of like my career and the way that I led in those things. So it might be like something that he's going through now. And I don't know how somebody like Groove would help him through that because Groove's like the polar opposite. Groove's always chill. Like they're in a timeout. <laughs> it's it's cool, like 14, 14. He's just chilling. He's got his notepad. He's got his legs crossed. He's just like, yep. Okay. We'll turn to page 74. Uh, goes, we're going to run, uh, you know, like, like Blade, and he just, yeah. And they, and they get out of there and they win the round and everything's chill. But like this is this is the thing I think for Nafani I don't know how he can learn that I don't know if he needs like a mentor for it or like if it's just like he eventually figures out himself that's something is this that something I think, that this is something that you've picked up on like watching them because I, I it's just hard for he's me made to... a comment before in like okay. an interview about like the emotional side and like him celebrating and I think like he said maybe this was during EPL I forget okay. about him like celebrating like not like that kind of stuff over the top but like that's a hard thing to reel in it's a hard thing to to be motivational outside of like when that's your 
that's the way that you've led. You know what I mean? I I can probably go into a bit more detail, but I also don't want to fucking spend yeah sure. Too long no, I was just about. curious about what you're basing it on because like, like it's hard. It was hard. It's hard for me to gauge that. You know, like not yeah. watching the team in person and and whatever, and just like not not seeing how they react to each other when they're when things are down or or whatever. Oh, I don't you know, think it's just they difficult. react negatively to him. Like no, I no, just, I don't mean that. Necessarily. I'm just meaning. I just mean like the way that they interact. You know, it doesn't necessarily yeah. mean like that they're pissed off about something or whatever, but just like things being too quiet. You know, when they're down or stuff like that. You know. Yeah, it's just one of those things I think he has to like learn how to manage sure. that's all. Um, but outside of that, then it's the players being able to make those big boy players I was talking about, right? Like, you know, Shiro getting that round when he needs to get that round or like if there's if there's issues. Because we I think they lack, they have really talented players. I think we saw it in that Liquid series in Pro League where they just decided to like aim up the fuck out of them, I think mm -hmm. it was. And it just felt like Axel they were... as well, he's been stepping up. Like his form has been rising. Like if he continues like this on the major, it's going to be... He's... That, that's going to be sick. <laughs> he, yeah. he is pretty sick when he's on point. But that's actually that, something I wanted to mention because like we we see some of these people that we weren't necessarily sold on. Like we see it with Sphinx. I know Ence isn't necessarily the same category, but they, they obviously had the appeal run that uh, where Sphinx was was amazing until the final. And and now that he had another great tournament, obviously not as well tested as you know some of these other teams because they faced a pretty easy set of teams um, until the last round, I think. And so, like, we see some of these players like an Exile, you know, that we were putting some question marks on during the last year, like a Spinks, you know, who's who's been kind of up and down for ends. Obviously, again, different caliber. Uh, I, was, I had another example that I forgot that that was a uh, res of, there you go, that, that, that's another one that we've always said, like, okay, like, we know that he can do it, but we just don't see it often enough. And we see these players kind of, like, come together, you know, all at once, almost at the same time for some of these teams. And so it's it's making things even more interesting going to the major and, yeah. you know, like them actually having consistent stars in front of their teams, you know, when they previously didn't. True. Imagine yeah. Ents winning the major. Wouldn't that be crazy? But easy for Ents. Um, the other team in this bucket here that we've got is for NIP, and that was Brolin on debut. Brolin played fantastically well. Oh, uh, yeah. So brought the brought but the I think the biggest question marks for everybody was who's orping. It looked like Essa Tag did the lion share, but it looked like other players did it when they felt that yeah, they had the need kinda. to do so. Did was there any other real takeaways for NIP? They they just took care of business on debut they, with they, they the had some, what was that one vertigo game that they had that was pretty pretty they lost trash. To flames, right? Opening in flames. Yeah, yeah, flames. Flames kind of banged them out there. They're like a lot of it wasn't that overtime though. Yeah, but yep. doesn't matter. True, it doesn't, <laughs> doesn't change. The, yeah, okay, okay. No, I mean, uh, uh, are you talking about the end series at the end, maybe? Because that's was, that's where it was 16, 9, 12, 3 no, on the CT side. I, I didn't watch. I didn't watch the end game. Okay. Um, but but yeah, I think in the in the vertical one, you saw a lot of you know new team struggles in terms of like the trading being non-existent. Like three guys dying to one guy holding an angle. It's like. Ha, what what is going on here? Please, please. <laughs> if we're going to talk about teams in fucking Vertigo. Wait till we get to OG, man. Uh, oh, oh, okay. I don't favorites. even remember that. That at this point, like, ah, they so, were at the so long they ago. were at the event. Um, <laughs> That's the thing. Ever. Like it's they they've just fallen so far. I didn't mean to interrupt you on your NIP. Point no, it's, it's just fine. That, I I just saw uh, uh, for NIP. I think uh, they're obviously playing without an opera, real opera. Um, as a tag is. Despite my funny tweet, not the best Danish opera and not any top level opera or even close to it. So that's a problem. Problem is like swapping roles around because they essentially put Brolan in all of Brolan's roles and uh, everyone else had to like accommodate a bit. Yep. And they're, yeah, they, they're not going to be a super well oiled machine at, at the major. But again, as NIP have been doing, they're probably going to make a, decent run uh, anyway they're maintaining this high floor that we we're talking yeah. about right they're maintaining that right? yeah, i didn't think floor. we expected that to disappear so i think it's good i, I mean i'm just excited to see what comes next because like it, well, I think can... their floor is probably even higher now yeah <laughs> and I, they're like peak. if if you have res and brolin like we've just added a whole nother name we didn't have before right before it was like yeah. res and hampus and that was it right like now it's like that's not discrediting the other players it's just in terms of star level performances but now if you get Brolin playing well and Rez playing well and Hampus playing well, it's like, okay, well, you can have like Essa Tag doing a, he doesn't, he doesn't need to get all the entries if those riflers are getting the entries. Right. So I think that's quite, quite interesting to at least, uh, to at least have a conversation about. Um, okay. Where are we at here? 
People are talking about the I am Dallas thing where devices the listed. No, I am oh, Dallas. Oh, the the device device somebody listed. edited in. Yeah, it's, yeah. There was nothing there. That's just whatever. I don't know. People are on so much fucking hopium with this whole device thing because he's playing a couple of phaser games and stuff. Like, yeah, I, think, I, I heard, think, yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's something that I've said before already. Like, I think if if there was any chance of a device coming in forward, the major or even close after that, I think there's no way it would be just Fuzi going out. Like, they would just replace whatever, whoever else they were planning to replace whenever a device comes back. And then they would, they would keep Fuzi for the time being. Or sure. you know, get a different offer because like the roles would just be the cla- the role clashes would be all over the place if you had a a plan in the short term to get an offer you know back. So it's yeah. just it doesn't make any sense for him to come back at least not until the latter half of the year. I would say. Do you imagine as well if he came back now and like cucked one of his teammates who are in there? Like imagine and imagine if it was Essa Tag, and like yeah. Essa Tag kind could of be. only went to NIP because like Device was yeah. there type that you know like imagine that like I don't I don't think you could do that like. This is the thing. I think that the community has like so much fucking hopium right now that they think that old boy device is going to be back for the major. Look, if, like, he, if he decides to go back, I don't see how an IP will say no. No, but even well, if it's like right at the fall of the would, major, you know, I feel like it would happen. I just yeah. can't see him doing it. Like I wouldn't, I'm not going to put a wager yeah, on it. Yeah, probably not. But like I, I would, right? Yeah. Like I, I, I feel, I don't feel that he would, he would return. But I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, let's jump forward because it's already fucking late. Yeah. Um, the next one here says state of EG bad news bears and party astronauts. Did that get what? left in? I guess that left him from I think last that's week. from we the last did, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah one. I think we, we can move in. Yeah. Uh, okay. G2 Vitality Outsiders. Um, let's start with G2. Uh, we didn't talk about, we didn't talk about big. We didn't talk about Copenhagen Flames. Maybe I we talk big, about. They're in the next one. I think they're in the next one. If I, next if one I... is uh, the underdog stories, BNE, Eternal Fire. The... After that? Biggest heartbreaker saw Anonimo. Okay, Biggest names I... missing out. OG Mouse Fnatic. Okay, I added it at some point, but I guess it didn't go through. Okay, through that's well. The, this one here should be Copenhagen Flames and Big. We right? can talk about that. That was like kind of overachieving, I'd say. Well, that's Big, kind like, of the I think Big shocked everybody with their with their the phase win. Yeah, yeah. But the thing is, those are the type of games that I didn't get to see because I was like working on other matches. Did you, Prof Striker? Were you guys able to catch the big games? Uh, I don't yeah. remember anything out of them. I know I watched them. Bits, I'll bring I, in the run out. I obviously yeah. the Crimble factor was insane. Well, uh, I said he's like the best, yeah. the best talent they've had in Germany in years or something like that, right? Yeah. That I mean, that's how sentiment. he played. He did play like a fucking madman. The phase game, uh, we can talk about that <laughs> and uh, just talk about Crimble being having like seven clutches, I think, in four maps yeah. that they played. They went 3 0. They two I remember phase. that USP round in the B bomb site for him. Like there, I do remember a bunch of Crimbo rounds. So I'm just bringing it up here. Their run. Uh, they had uh, an insane, uh, in insane game. series against Phase. Let's be real. Like some crazy rounds that they won that they shouldn't have been in contention to win at all. Uh, especially against a team like Phase. Well, they beat Saw. Then they beat Outsiders. Then they. Sorry, everybody, feeling my mic. Then they beat Phase, which is the yeah. game we're talking about here. Two O. And somebody uh, explain to me why the fuck people would let. Big play, best of ones on Dust Two. Like uh, outside, it's outside. Astral, outside it. I remember Astral is playing I was ancient. At the red. Yeah, that's yeah. Astral is playing ancient. That doesn't make sense. Yeah, being yeah, there there were some interesting vetoes. I think throughout all of it, like underdog teams willing to give favorite teams a CT star on ancient in multiple games, like Quasar or versus the, Navi, or for even example. the other way. It's like what was it? Who was it? Uh, somebody was picking. What was it? Over no. Ah, uh, well, I'll, I'll remember at some point whenever, whenever we come across that team. But there was like an underdog that uh, had a really great map and everybody was just like, okay, with them playing it, apparently. Yeah, I think, I think it did happen a couple of times in the, in the mix. And there was some, well, some definite odd results. Then you also have teams like G2, whose map pool is Inferno, Mirage, and Dust2. So w- <laughs> whatever underdog you're, you're going to be playing, they were comfortable. you're playing against on their best map, essentially. So what, what, the, what the fuck is it? How can that be your fucking... Map pool. Wait, How hold up, that... prof. Let's keep the German viewers happy. Say something okay. nice about Big. Sorry, uh, Big. Big looked really good. Looked really good. The funny, the funniest thing is that people forgot that F- Faven was joined, added to this team like That's two months true. ago. Yeah, and like no one even, even mentions him anymore. He's just there doing his job and. That's that's respectable though. That's kind of how he looked from the beginning of the team. Just like put him put him on the B sites or whatever, and he's gonna anchor. He's gonna anchor and do a decent job, but he's not gonna you know excite you too much. And then you have you know when taps and pops off, then you, you get, get a, a, a stronger looking team. And that was yeah. the thing. Firepower always seemed to be an issue. All right, striker, your turn. Say something nice about big. Um, 
You don't have to nothing you nothing you really like yeah okay. the crimbo the crimbo thing was i just couldn't remember anything about the run because it was it was over so quickly because they i think even the first two what was it saw they did it in two days yeah so on yeah. outsiders were the first couple of matches that i saw the first day as well and it's just like they they just bet over them you know and the outsiders let them play us too like you don't do that against big and best of one like are you crazy and so yeah yeah I, it's coming back to me now some of those crimbo rounds now that are because there's so much fucking counter strike we played over there yeah. but yeah I think that uh, it was it was the, the Mirage win. I thought was was impressive. The sixteen fourteen matchup, right? Like uh, that's where Tapson had a, one of one of his big boy games. I think like um, some words in German for our, for our fans says uh, Christian Lenz, the biggest guy in big. What did he say? He asked for some words in German oh, for their fans um, from you. Oh, okay. O o feel, feel, good. Feel, feel good. Feel good. What what is that? Very good. Oh. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, no, they 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 all say off get, so that that that'll work. The, my German's not very good. It doesn't expand. It just stays the same size. I can tell you, Lenz, that Dinah Organs in Vishterna, right? I, 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 I think that one's eyes. great to Lenz. Yeah. So let's see, how his eyes are like stars. Um, okay. Uh, let's move on to the Copenhagen Flames. Uh, Nikodos is obviously the best Danish orper. Yeah. There's not even any question about that. He's fucking sick. Yeah. Yabby had that awesome game on overparts. Uh, Zyphon fucking popping off as well. Poor guy's fucking muted. Blackbird, cat, <laughs> what cyclone? He's fucking a different name every game, but he was he was good too. I think someone was bringing up the hours that Zyphon has. I think they okay. said he had like twelve. I think no, was it eighteen k hours? Someone said he had like I was re. I re, I go into the fucking the darkest HL TV threads, but someone was saying like his hours are insane and his face at games are fucking insane, and the kid's only like eighteen. And like he just playing a shitload of CS, um, but yeah, I was really impressed with with Flames. How they made it super easy as well. So uh, a good story. They, they they did what a lot of other favorite teams couldn't do, which was just take care of their business. Imagine that. Imagine beating. And they didn't have to slap anybody in the face. Ranked thirty one in the world or sixty nine. They just did their job. They just came in and not didn't shit the bed. Yeah. Can we get to the teams who shot the bed now? Pretty much. Yeah. Let's do that. Okay. D two. So we were talking about complete teams before. The G2, like, G2 throughout their games looked like had a face like a slapped ass. You know what I mean? Like it was, it, it, they just looked like either so stressed the entire time or like there was something wrong. Like they just, they didn't look like they were having fun at all. It looked stressful as fuck. I was like, my back was tensing up watching them play. Was it like anybody else getting that vibe or just me? Not just you. It's, it's, it, it's, it almost feels like old G2 at this point, you know? Like you start getting positive about the team and you're like, okay, this makes sense. They have such sick individuals, you know, and then like the synonymo match happens and you're like, w where did that come from? I, I, I don't know. Prof, you, you got any diagnosis going on here? What's your take? You got any spies feeding you any information? <laughs> uh, no, not really, but I've watched the games and it's uh, even some of the results, like you, you look at the Sangal game, and I know these games don't mean much, and you're not going to be super motivated and it's whatever, but you're playing against a team that's not even on anyone's radar, playing with a coach who, whose last official game was in 2017. It's like, and you look, looks like an even game, at least for the first half. It looks like you're like kind of struggling to keep them at bay, and like if a couple of rounds go differently, maybe this is, you know, double digits like 16 13 situation it's like how how can this be happening how can how i think that's the thing they look uncomfortable at all times and my my current thinking about g2 is like they're just a team that don't look able to overcome any any like difficulties like if the if the match is going wrongly it's going to they're going to end up on on the wrong side if the if the round goes like in the wrong direction they get like two one digs on them they're not going to be able to like bounce back from it it's not it's not in every round they still can can recover but it feels more often than not they don't have the ability to you know overcome adversity and uh for a team that wants to win a major that's they're not going to win a major like this this is yeah. this is not this is not a team that's going to win a major they, watch them win the major now they play ah uh, that'd be <laughs> that would be a meat clip and a half but well, i don't know they they just lose they lose equals all the time that bad news Eagles game, I know that's a game which is going to be a messy game because that's how both the, especially uh, bad news Eagles wants to play. But what, what the fuck? Like how, what are, what are these rounds? They just like walk into a guy and like he won these, you three guys, one in like with no trading attempts at all. Uh, I don't know. 
it's uh but it, like, the map pool seems yeah. worrying to me yeah and it's uh, as well as the players like even monacy monacy is still super young so maybe you're judging him a bit too too harshly no hold up i want you to judge him under the guise that in an interview again now i haven't read the the whole content i just read headlines as we know in an interview that you blokes ran right if you want to let him off for being young that's one thing but we have to start taking him at his word at some point right i think right now he's just saying what the anime hero would say right which is this is the headline monacy on being nervous at land it's not an issue for me right so you you can't give him the way out if you want to believe that interview i didn't i didn't read that one i read a lot of them but I, I, that one i didn't uh, get to so i don't know uh, if there's more details inside but i i can say that the way he was playing even though like the scores at the end were good you can see in some of those situations he's like that is very that's like five out of ten performance it's like missing up shots going for the deagle it's like very looking very uncomfortable in like well you know it just like executes on the bomb site it's not like he, he was put in the worst pos position ever so yeah i mean you can tell you can tell he's a bit too jittery at the moment for for the role that he's in especially like he has there were browns even against the uh, anonimo but even against sungal where they were just where just one like the other team is just swarming inside and you know he has an op and he obviously has a couple of targets to shoot at he gets gets just one of those kills and that round is basically over like they, they're just in a 5v3 advantage but he doesn't get that kill he lets them push into the site and it becomes a retake instead of him picking off that one player making it easy for his team you know some of these really key shots that aren't necessarily difficult to hit or whatever he doesn't have to be flashy he just needs to be fairly consistent about hitting these shots and he just doesn't you know sometimes and sometimes he does. Sometimes he will be he will be pretty reliable across an entire half. But there are just these rounds where, like, a couple of missed top shots, and that just means that the other team is going to get into the site, you know, and it's going to become a difficult situation. And like, I, I do feel like he needs to get a bit more consistent with, like, it's almost starting to feel a bit like the thirty degree Drake and rule with him mm -hmm. <laughs> at yeah. times, you know, just because like he is incredibly he can be incredibly flashy, like insanely flashy. Like more than almost anybody else, but like he just needs to be a bit more consistent with like the ninety percent, eighty percent shots, you know. I, I wonder. I want to read this little excerpt from the interview here that I brought up. I've actually, mm -hmm. I've actually found it. Do you want me to read out the, the question mm -hmm. with the full answer? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, it says, "How has it been working with X Taz and Lexi B? How are they helping you to integrate into the team?" So this is quite a lengthy answer. So I'll read this out for our audio only listeners. Lexi B and X Taz help me in every way that they can. Almost everything they help with me. Uh, Almost everything they help me with is about the game, but they also help me to understand how to think correctly. They help me with macro understanding while micro understanding comes by itself and Alexi B doesn't pay too much attention to it. In general, it's all about macro rotations, grenades, and so on. That is how they help me, right? So however he wants to approach the game, the fights he wants to take, all that kind of stuff sounds like he does. And then in terms of just, hey, like protocols and this is how we rotate and everything, okay? Uh, then the next bit is, also, they teach me how to make fast decisions, which is a very important thing in Tier 1 Counter-Strike, especially on LAN. You have to handle your emotions and think fast. Some players react slower than usual because they are nervous on LAN, but it's not an issue for me, right? Uh, this is followed up with, uh, I'm not worried while playing, but I can make fast, uh, but I can't make fast decisions sometimes because I have to think it through and communicate them to my team in English. Cha-ching! Not my native language. I need to keep working and putting in more effort. So there you go. So there's the context. The issues that he's having are not or not because of the nerves, but because he's having a hard time piecing it together from Russian to English. That's another one for the Chad virtual bag of fun. Um, so that adds a bit more context to it there. So then, yeah, yep. I guess that that's an issue that can be fixed with time, right? Like yep. the, the more you speak in English, the more yep. competent you'll become and the better it will become. So there you go. That's better framing. Cool. Um, yeah, I mean, we do we do have to keep in mind that this is this third third month of tier one. You know, it's not yeah. like he's not he's not meant to be fucking simple from from day one. Like, it's not a reasonable assumption. But obviously, you know, there are these there are going to be inconsistencies in his in his play. Yeah, for sure. Okay, let's talk about um, vitality. That was pretty nerve wracking. That you know, I was like, oh, oh no, yeah. they're gonna make it. Like, there was a couple of worrying moments uh, for vitality here, but they but they they get through. Um, and I think Zywu playing some good Counter Strike again. That has to be one of the key takeaways, right? Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The mouse game. Oh, that was that was a scary moment. That was that was like going one all down in the series, losing that new game. 
And then Dust 2, like, first half looked like trash. They were prob- they were supposed to lose Dust 2. It was like 10-3, 9-3 or something like that. And you're like, yeah, it's happening, boys. No Zaiwu at the Major. Rip but no Magic team. and Dupree at the Major as well, right? Yeah. Uh, Dupree is one of the three, right? That attended yep. everyone. Yeah, uh, him, him shock. Dip, and yeah. Shocks, yeah, I looked looked up that stat today, and I felt bad because we didn't really bring it up on the broadcast. So, for for Zipnex especially because he was also in danger of missing out. Um, but yeah, the pre delivering is de- delivering, so that's great. Finally, I mean, finally, Zaiwu has been super subpar and not up to his standard for for this year. Um, they finally won a map on Mirage. They had a pretty hard run, right? They played phase. Yeah. They they played Dignitas, then they played Phase, then they played Eternal Fire, then they played Navi, then they played Mao. So it wasn't yeah. like an easy run, right? I think and they also to... had close Mirage games against those the, the other two Phase and Navi. So which was not impressive. Like, that's the thing. Like that's what I'm saying. Like the the Mao's one when they were heading into the Mao's one, I'm like, if they were able to take the two best teams in the world or the perceived two best teams in the world that close on Mirage, they should be able to be Mao's. It's going to come down to like pressure probably if they yeah. don't, but just because you know there's they're, they're clearly improved on the on the on the map. You know, it's just that I haven't really played the teams that they can beat on <laughs> yeah. it because no. Navi and Phase are probably the two best teams on Mirage as well. It's that there's just one of their best maps, right? So I I think I think it has dispelled like because in the column with it just being lost, 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 they've obviously finally broken that now with the one win over Mouse. But isn't that crazy that they had to tr- break their literally? their streak where they had not won a single Mirage as a roster to qualify for the major. Like that, you could that's... tell the relief, man. It was not oh, just yeah. Dupree, but everybody. Man. Well, I... Dupree's reaction, obviously, but like it was just Oh, so yeah, funny. the clutch at the end, right? Yeah, it was like you were just, 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 yeah, this is done. Biggest relief in the world, man. But that's what it was for a lot of teams, right? Qualifying again for the major, probably a lot of them felt like, yeah, we deserve to be there. And a lot of them probably do, right? But I like this of forcing them to requalify here and yeah. getting to see the newer names or the less popular names going toe to toe and that they can play counter and that they can shoot, right? That was another, they, they, they can, you know, maybe they don't have all the support and all the strats and everything, but they can definitely, they can definitely shoot. Um, so yeah, I, I think I here, think about vitality, the just the discussion about Misuta is becoming, you know, louder and louder. It? I haven't I, been looking bad. at it. How bad pretty is bad. Zero point eighty four rating. Yeah, one zero point eighty. But you know, when you get when you get into those positions and it's not even the IGL that has like some sort of an excuse, he doesn't necessarily have to top frag or like frag super hard. He can be like one of the like when you have two people like that, then obviously, you know, Apex still has pop off games. So it's not even like the apex is that low. So it's just like it's gonna be rough, right? It's even worse when you look at the maps because he had a 1.54 rating against Dignitas, their first game. Yeah, and it was he was sharp in that. Every game. other sharp. map he was red. 0. 0.8, 0. 0.81, 0. 0.74, 0. 0.87, so 0. 0.7, 0. 0.7, 0. 0.66, 0. 0.68. So not a single yeah. game aside from the Dignitas one, which I watched and I remember him being quite he was doing good quite well. Yeah. Oh man, that's super rough. That's so, very rough. Yeah. And I also saw him in positions where he was just supposed to get kills, you know, but he just didn't. He he was just missing like easy shots, you know. Yeah. Okay. Well, I guess the that is a hurdle, right? That they'll need to overcome if they want to go deep at the major. Um, and then I guess after the major, that's where we have probably a different conversation about it. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, that's not fun. Um, Goodbye, but yeah, sucker. I think Magis Dupree what? continues to. Oh, I think I closed the wrong window. Ah, <laughs> uh, we'll get you back. <laughs> D- Dupree continues to play some good CS. I will looking back. Apex always impresses me with his impact. And I think Magis was looking more comfortable. Like in that Mirage game, I think we we're talking about here had some big impactful moments where they needed him. Um, so I think that the thing with this team was like a communication thing in my mind anyway. All the parts and the pieces make sense and it can work. But if the Masuda stat line one, that's that's a that's a conversation to have, right? So um yeah, that's that's where maybe it's not clicking as it as it should. Um outsiders. Anyone? Yeah, rough. Yep, I I, think I don't even know. I uh, yeah, I'm trying to remember some of these games that happened. The Soul game is the one that stands out. Obviously, yeah, of we covered course. It in I mean, the one moment. Out, yeah. also, Dignitas was also down to the wire. I don't. I don't know. Doesn't seem like a. Doesn't th- seem like a team I'll expect much more of. Let's just I, let's just I get the major over yeah. over with and see what happens. I mentioned it before. I said like the fates of Navi and Outsiders are a bit unknown, and I think that I would just reiterate that now. I think that's maybe more the case with outsiders than it is with 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 navi 
So I don't know if if they're going to be a roster going forward. Um, but yeah, I, I guess that they give us some heart stopping moments, right? With yeah. that with that I mean, sore game. Yeah, Kindar even after they qualified, he was talking. Um, he didn't like the interview with the with the desk, and he literally said like. I think Pimp was there. Who was there? I don't know. But someone asked him, like, what's going on? He's like, what What are the issues in the team? And he says, like, there's there so are many so issues. many issues. I can't even yeah. can't even start talking about it. And the situation, uh, the global situation is obviously affecting them as well. Uh, maybe more so than some other teams, uh, considering how Virtus Pro is, what they're doing on social media and with everything involved. I don't think that helps uh, the players at all to get any sympathy or any, any like, good vibes yeah. surrounding them in a rock and a hard place type situation here um so yeah it'd be curious to see what what happens with that after um yeah some uninspired games from them looks like they were just not going through the paces but doing it by the book be interesting to see that like when it is the major and everything changes like that's the thing when it is the major and you're there and you're competing it is different and you just need to have like some cinderella type matches like the obviously firepower and the pieces of the team and everything and we know it's possible that like we've seen them be good not that long ago so and there's no reason that that can't happen again it just right now it's not looking like a like a great story all right let's jump forward into some of these uh underdog bits and bobs How, is there anybody else here that we're really missing i don't i don't think so i think we're covering it all off plus anyway we're not going to cover uh, everybody yeah where are we where are we, what are we talking about i'm i lost i got uh, bad news eagles and eternal fire is where we're going to go next okay okay that's yep. that's fine i yeah. think both exciting exciting teams from the fan base perspective also from like some players storylines uh will they be amazing at the at the major will they make it to the top 16 that that would be the goal for these teams essentially yeah, yeah i i think like they were cusp teams that we had anyway right when we discussed them yeah. now it's about can they continue to push the issue because we saw some things that were good we saw some things that were not so good from from both of the teams right um nerves is obviously a factor uh yeah. being the first time that they're like representing as these rosters obviously a big one for uh the bad news eagles but same for turkish counter-strike it's been a long time between drinks since we had space soldiers at a major for example yeah. um i think it's actually little... crazy that it's kind of like even zantares who's basically like him and Woxic are the only two kind of like big representatives of the region, you know, of in, in, in World Counter-Strike. And he was the one carrying them through it, you know, Zantar, Zantaras. That was really great to see. It was It's interesting that that's kind of how that team has progressed in, in the past few months because the, the in-game leadership went to Woxic, of all people, you know, from, yep. from Zantaras. And Zantaras, not necessarily even since then, I think he's been performing pretty good the entire time but he's just been he's just been their obvious star player as he should be and he's been confirming that here too so it's th that is a cool story for sure in terms of players yeah i um i didn't get i didn't get to cover a single bad yeah. news eagles game yeah. oh, i was talking I about the eternal one. fire but yeah it's, uh, vice versa for me i think a lot of people talked about xflog being really good he had rating some impact wise, moments for rating sure. wise not but uh, i think he had some he, clutches he did well yeah and yeah. a lot of a lot of criticism towards Woxic was heard in the group. So that's I what I'm going to say. Woxic referenced it, I think, in an interview um, about like with the in-game leading and maybe him not having as much impact because of like the role he's doing for the team, um, which kind of same thing as with the Cadian situation. I think if a Tunnel Fire want to be elevated, then he needs he needs to work out a way to manage the two mm -hmm. right, and have more impact because we all know how impactful he can be. But there was just certain little details with the team that I... Uh, maybe I'm like being overly harsh on, but there were some things like Immor did like a lot of like dry swinging corners, like early in rounds where they could have like jiggled or flashed or done something, right? Like there was no need for them to take those type of risks. Um, like th some of those just stood out like him. Like, then when Zantaras came and did it, like Zantaras, when he knew that he was going up against an orb line would wide swing. So like he's past that tight angle mm -hmm. and then he would peek back into it. Whereas Immor would just like kind of just like walk it. So some little details like that for me, Woxic definitely, uh, with Eternal Fire, like I, I, he know, I, everybody knows he can play better, right? And I, I don't think he's at any disillusion that either. So if he like finds that form, it could be really exciting. Um, I think, like, you, it's hard to say with consistently. Like some games I watched, and Calix was down the bottom of the score, but the next game he's just fucking owning, just like mowing everybody down. And like Zentaras is going from like missing a couple of shots to fucking headshotting everybody. So I think like it's a consistency factor with them. Some of their gameplay was very flux as well. Um, I'm, let me just see if I can bring up here their, their results because I might be able to say which match it was. It was one of their earlier games on Dust 2. 
not versus phase first phase that they didn't really have a chance the vertigo game was the one with the disappearing bomb that came on in which was a little bit annoying uh the dust two game against vitality like they were just very like reactive like they would try and take the openings all the time and they wouldn't like play out rounds and stuff so like maybe just some small things and that's stuff that they can definitely work on from from the from the demos but like I, yeah i didn't see too much of bad news eagles is there much like i, I don't mean that like it, i just was working the other games I saw, the, I saw the entropic and this uh, part of the entropic and this and a part of the sinners one. They just they just have this. I don't know what to call it. Like, I, and I think other people have said something very similar. Where they like you feel good watching them, even though you know it's not like amazing, amazingly thought through CS because they are kind of like they have like a good combination of aggressive and some like really nice, really cool pieces that just make plays at the right times and stuff like sure. that. It's just, they're so it's just exciting. Really cool. Exactly, they're exciting and really cool to watch. Sometimes they're they get way too crazy and they just like over push all angles and stuff like that. Uh, but like they are a cool team to watch just because of that kind of like that quality to them. Yeah. Now I'd like to watch more of them. Like I think that there was a lot of conversation about them being quite like puggy. Like I feel like that's yeah, like yeah. the line that you're skirting right there. But I think nerves definitely played in for them because as we talked about at the start of the show a little bit earlier on, like this makes their whole year with the sticker money. It's a fucking huge deal from yeah. just a financial standpoint alone. And that is an issue. Like, I'm not saying that they're not going to have the drive. They, they want to play well. It's a major, but like, when that's like job done and secured, no matter what happens, like that can. I'm not saying it will, but that type of complacency, like you, you want to kind of hit the ground running and stuff. And with only two weeks in between, yeah, it's probably take a last, week for this to settle in. They have yeah. to last as well, like tomorrow yeah. or something. Yeah, and they also they're all. It's also one of those situations where this is a team that probably nobody really had on their radar too much going into well, we the RMR. We discussed that it was a cusp team, didn't we? Yeah, we said there sure. Was a but I'm, I'm talking more more from like the 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 point of view of the teams that that played there. You know, we knew that there were like some really big favors that were going through, and then there was like a lot of teams that we weren't necessarily sure which one of them would have the chance, right? But like from the from the standpoint of the favorites, I don't think a lot of them really looked it looked super in depth into bad news eagles even though they've played quite a lot online and so i feel like going to the major is also going to be very different in terms of how people approach them they're going to be much more aware of the type of plays that they make and like yeah. th this type of a team is going to is probably going to struggle hard once teams catch up to what they're doing you know it's it's just that kind of a play style that's that's probably quite readable if you have a little bit of experience with it you know i see where you're going with that um okay there's a couple of the names that we should mention in this same bucket um Fours is one to mention. Probably yeah. want to have a couple couple words about Jerry. Uh, Club. There's four four major the Shalvey, Shalvey, pretty sick guy. That that Shalfi, Shalfi actually. Um, yeah, he's been Shalfie. he he's he's legit. He's pretty good. Um, four is also just like a classic Jerry story. He managed to like put some new squad together and they played pretty well. But at the same time, they they didn't have a, the toughest they run. They beat so. Store to qualify. Yeah, we can't really give him like too much credit. We can give him credit for what they did. They beat OG. He beat uh, us in front of you. Yep. Uh, so it's great. But yeah, we we just need to see more of them. I, I feel like they always have been a team, and they have been consistently a team that's around that level. Who, if you if you told me before the event, like these are the teams that they have to beat, and I would say like, okay, yeah, this can happen. This is completely reasonable. So yeah, good good for them. And but it could be like one of these teams that has players of of the future for CIS. So that's why they're interesting to me. Yeah, no, I agree with that. Just to go over their run, they lost Heroic 16-9 on Overpass. Uh, they beat Game Allegiance 16-14 on Mirage. This is then when the upset happened against OG on Dust2. I think Manti was playing like a beast that game, but it was a 19-17 overtime win. And that's the type of maps where these upsets can happen, like a Mirage or Dust2 or something like that. Like that's that's where, I'm not saying you're asking for it, but that's where the, the best chance of something like this is to mm. happen. Um, then fours beat saw to qualify as as their uh, I think it was a two one matchup there. So um, that's how that's how they got their path. Um, I'll throw this team to you, striker spirit. Did you catch much of them? Wait, let me just check out the. the... I, I can always run have to the kind run of like... right now. Yeah, yeah I'll, exactly. I'll go through the run to to go give everybody it. the uh, the the way for spirit there. I casted some spirit games. I wasn't overly impressed. I was surprised to see them pick up that final game. Where's their first matchup here? Is it their first like matchup it was, against Ants? So many matches that I have to always refresh my memory in some 16, like, 11, specific matchups. 16 11 lost to Ants on Mirage. Um, then they beat ASG, uh, which was Sviat's team, uh, 16 to 6 on Dust 2. Then in their follow up best to one, I think this was the Sinners game I did on Nuke, and they looked abysmal. They got fucking destroyed 16 to 6. Then they played Endpoint and 1 2 0. 
Uh, and then they played Anonimo and they won 2-1. Um, I think I didn't see a single one of those games, actually. Okay. Well, I guess I, so I, many sleepers, man. Like, yeah. Oh, tell me about it. Yeah, that, that, <laughs> was, that, was, that was the uh, Jamie Morning expert, shit. Like there's always experts yeah. for sleepers. I covered all these games. I'm like, sorry, uh, I, I, got, I got all the morning games. Like, so I had like the, you know, I, I had the Saw versus Fours game, for example. I had the Spirit versus Anonimo game. I had the Spirit versus Sinners game. Um, like I saw a lot of these matches. Dexter, okay. Dexter's still good. That much we can say. Everything else mm. about that team. Um, what was his name? I want to make sure Siren. I get it here. Siren, yeah, it's a moment. That Patsy in the Sinners game I did went outside and got killed through smokes like every round to Zedko. Like Zedko was just fucking destroying. It was like 17 and something in the first like eight rounds of play or something ridiculous. Um, Chopper still makes some really weird calls. Like some, <laughs> some really that. weird Classic. calls. Um, that's pretty pretty straightforward standard stuff you'd expect from them. Um, so yeah, like Magic's. Magic's is, yeah, just doing what he's doing before, like same yeah. level par for the course. But they would just make some crazy fucking calls, man. Like some of the T-side stuff, I don't know what was going on. Um, and then the last team would be Astralis, right? The, the team that we didn't mention would be Astralis. Now, Astralis versus G2 in that matchup, like I made a meme and I put it in our little chat group, right? It's the the guy sweating, <laughs> ready to press the oh, button. Oh, the vertigo, you like, mean? Uh, just the... The G2 versus Astralis game, like just in general. Yeah, yeah, that yeah series, but that, that right? ended on Vertigo. On, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was, was also that? like, I feel like, well, Astralis should have won that game, to be honest. Like they fucked up in one of those like late rounds on Vertigo, right? Um, I'm going, to going up A. Details. They were, they were like executing A. Um, what happened there? There was and a small against from like B. Yeah. There, there was the, I think that was a low buy from, from Astralis as well. Just like, uh, but they got into the site, they planted the bomb. Alexi B smokes the bomb, but it's, he actually doesn't smoke the bomb because yeah, yeah, it's not yeah. planted on default. Oh, yeah, right, right, right. Yeah. And it's like, oh my God, they're losing the round. And then he sw swings ramp, 1v1s, three, three guys in a row and defuse the bomb. It's like, okay. this, this is not how the round, this, this round does not play like this, but so, sometimes it does. Sometimes it just be like that. Yep. Yeah. Oh. I, I don't know for Astralis for in during that series, like I think people were like, Oh, what is G2 doing? And on the side of oh, like Astralis is actually pretty good. You know, like I think there was yeah. like both of those thoughts simultaneously. Um, I really like the way that Blame F is continuing to play. Like now it's replicable, right? He's, he seems like he's in areas where like he's finding impact. Like it's not when he was in game leading with complexity, it was just to get him room. And then if he didn't get anything off the room, that's it for the round. Like there's playmakers now. Farley had some tidy games on the AWP. Config again, like he didn't have like a crazy pop off, but they, but I didn't feel like they needed it this time round. Like I don't know, I felt like they were getting more out of their parts. Yeah. Um, I think I think if anything, I think Farley's already proven that he has a higher peak than Lucky. I think the con I don't know consistency still feels to be missing. I it's not like I watched every one of their games, but you know, looking at the player series, for example, it seems like wasn't much of a factor. They're good um, on ancient. What's sorry? They're good on ancient. Oh, they're good on ancient day. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, I was talking more about Farley in general. Oh, okay. Um, because I think, like we, especially the G two series, like he actually had really good two really good maps where I think he should have actually won the game for them. Um, didn't happen in the end, but you know, um, could have been even more tidy than than it than ended up being. You know, we actually got really fucking close against Heat, who I think it didn't they even throw like a big lead. Yes, on the Heat second map on ancient. on ancient. I think. Yeah. It was, yeah. yeah. That was like 14 to 11 or something like something that. Something like and then, that. And they ended up bringing it back. Yeah, 14 to 11. That one was pretty hard for poor Heat, I think. Um, yeah. I think my... It's interesting. Like, I'm kind of getting sold on this Astralis. Uh, I, I actually, after so so long that I had, like, no faith at all. The Farley, the Farley addition, I think he stepped up as the tournament progressed and had some, like, very important moments and games. So that's great. Uh, and it was also very interesting to see, like, Blame F started super hot, but Config started super shit. At the end of the tournament, they had the same rating. So Blame F in the, in the later games that were super important didn't really, wasn't really there when Config just, like, did his Config thing. So there is, there is a lot to, there uh, among those three players, I feel like there is a trajectory where they become pretty good. Um, but it's yeah, still, not a bad you know, trio, yeah. Yeah, that, that trio is looking like there is something there now. Because before with Lucky, it was like, yeah, with then Zipnix and then Glaive, I don't think that's, you know, there's just not enough there. Especially, especially, because I don't think this Astralis is, you know, a tactic, tactically super good team, well-oiled machine. It's that, not like old Astralis at all. No, they, they don't really extract the most out of, you know, don't overperform for what they have, the pieces.
Yeah. Uh, one question I wanted to ask here, because this was another thing that was like quite popular on the forums, was how hard people were ribbing on uh, Zipex. Um, yeah. Is is he? I haven't checked the stats either. Has anybody had a look at it? Like, is is he really struggling with this Astralis roster? Like, or is he just getting the unfair, like fucking classic forum comments? Because, uh, like you just mentioned, the Masuda thing, that one is yeah. like. I don't know. Concern. I don't know if the stats are the same, but I I feel like they're Zero the eye test. Six. 0.86 96 96 so okay that's, that's significantly Been better, kind of like but... on track with him the entire time like for yeah. a long time i think it's just um i think the eye test was a bit rough for zipix zipix in some of these games and rounds so that's okay. maybe that's maybe why that's where it's coming from oh yeah because like he's just playing like the elder statesman role of the team just like locking it down doing the job maybe having that one big clutch every now and again when they need yeah him. he did have yeah. one against heat on 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 ancient i think yeah. that was like a 1v2 rotating sometimes game. all you need mate sometimes yeah. all you need uh okay let's uh keep peddling this one forward because obviously we're behind schedule sorry everybody uh biggest heartbreak saw in anonymo i think the saw one there like we all we all fucking winced when we saw that diffuse yeah. come in and like people are like oh why did he peak are you guys fucking serious like put the context of what just happened in that situation and just sit in his his mind for one second yeah like and it's also like like in that situation you're not like in that half a second you're not sure if you're just coming from the left or the right you're no, just you know you're just reacting at that point and you're moving away from the bomb even just like because that's kind of like the obvious place to go so it's not like some of these tiny tiny little minute decisions like you can't really blame players for that like obviously like he he even liked him like he he probably should have even killed him at that point and then it comes down to the last 0 0.02 milliseconds like if you're blaming people for that type of a like the tiniest not even mistake you can't even call it a mistake like it's just how it turns out you know at that unfortunate point unfortunate like series of events yeah, yeah pretty I mean, much like it's, it's just crazy he ma maximized the amount of time staying alive while yeah. also maximizing the chance to actually like kill him and so win. like you combine these two odds like his odds to win that round or the the highest as they as high as they could be uh not not taking it into account like being a robot and knowing exactly the millisecond the calculation of if if I just stay here and he needs to swing like one pixel more, yeah. then this guy's gonna like you can't know that because no one can know that. Yeah. You can't be that precise. You're playing for time and also not trying to you know just die like a, like a bot like fucking Naf and Stewie or whoever yeah, it was in that. Yeah, you can't just and just like wait for them to kill you. You know, you right. have to do something. So like I think he played it about as well as you could. You know, like obviously you could have killed him in that no scope, but it's like you know a few few millimeters away and he maybe dies. You know. So yeah. it's just, it's just, it, it, you can't, you, you, yeah, that's not, that's impossible to blame it on, on Stadoto in that position. But, but that was heartbreaking as well, because like, obviously it was, they were the older boys team, right? Their average age was like 28.6 or some shit. So like, everyone's like, oh, if the old boys can do it. I actually couldn't believe you know? when I saw that, but I Isn't actually couldn't believe somebody's older than Imperial. Yeah. And and that's the thing, like you, and you had some good performances out of like Arky, for example, he had like some pop-off maps and Roman did as well, like that you know they were showing that you can play intelligent counter strike and have impact like they they were playing a good team based counter strike with individual moments like it's mm -hmm. nothing crazy flashy or anything like that but it it just was it was just solid cs so that one there was it was a bit rough to see for them um and we had uh obviously the anonymo one and that's because of like the all the hard teams that they played like I did the G2 upset. I did the Entropic upset on Ancient when they won that like final round against Lackey trying to clutch him from Cave. Hmm. Um, like they were, there were some entertaining games of Counter Strike. Like um, so, uh, you know, they they kind of showed some good face. Uh, I think the Innocent was one of the stands up, but Veggy was was also up there as one of the stands up for the team. Ascarish, uh, he had his his like they all had their moments. I think Tudson put up something about him dealing with double vision or something like that, which is. I, I yeah, guess yeah. really not a problem you want to have when playing Counter Strike <laughs> when you're seeing more more targets or whatever. I don't know if, how how he sees it, but that Sounds didn't rough. sound like a positive thing. But that was like the other one, and it would have been quite a fun redemption arc story after the the forty percent loss NIP drama that happened <laughs> to the RMRs previously, right? So um, that was the other heartbreaking story. Anyone have any like Polish Counter Strike seems like the the talent and the pieces like after the Ego stuff and now this team, it feels like things are starting to come together a bit. Or am I just on a bit of I feel like I it's know, always like a similar situation. Yeah. Up until now, we haven't really seen much from this team either. So it's kind of like it's difficult to gauge how much yeah. this was kind of like a Cinderella run or or if this is something if this if we can expect more from from the country moving forward. It's kind of like if they've been in this place for quite a long time now where they have That's a bunch true. of these tier two teams, but none of none of them really stand out consistently, you know? Yeah. So this true. is like the best that we've seen from them for a while.
All right. We've painted, we've painted them. We've given them their thumbs up. Okay. Uh, some of the bigger names to miss out here. Uh, OG, Mounts, Fnatic, and Entropic. I think... Yeah. OG and Entropic definitely didn't deserve to to be at the major after the, the teams that they lost to Entropic. Oh, wait, what was the run again? But it was... Uh, but we can bring didn't, it they, up. didn't they lose to everybody who didn't even go through? I mean, I'll second. bring it up. I'll bring it up for everybody. <laughs> okay, Bad News Eagles, they actually they, they went through, then Anonymo and then Heat were the three games that they lost, and then they played Endpoint in the only one that they got. So it's like it's obviously a, a pretty bad set of teams that they couldn't get through, you know? So that was a really bad, uh, bad run from them. And in general, like it's... I was trying to work out why they're struggling and I wasn't even sure like what to point towards because like the usual stuff that we talked about where like Elian doesn't really show up against tier one team. He was but, there enough. Yeah, that's the that's that's what I'm saying. Like he was fine. Um you know, when Nickelback's always gonna have these rounds where he's just gonna do something weird, maybe he's gonna kill a call a weird round or just like make a weird individual move, but like that's just gonna happen with him every now and again but the, the the pieces were kind of there but they still weren't able to get these wins so i'm not i don't even know what to pin like what to point to yeah the hard one within tropic i don't know og though og though but what chat. do we say about og come on chat go off go off, i don't want to go off turn on the flames i don't want but what's the point i mean uh, eternal eternal fire game yeah. when Eternal know, Fire man. when they didn't ban Vertigo, so oh, Eternal yeah. Fire picked Vertigo. Well, this year I didn't know how to. And OG picked us too. Yeah, you're right. You are right. They you know they how, didn't how... make it easy for themselves, did they? They have like a combined one map played on those two maps. Yeah. Okay. Hold up. You're reminding me now. Okay. So the problem with this OG one is if you guys missed it, right? Maybe you did. The OG versus Eternal Fire two two game, and this isn't even taking into the record of the rest of the shit. OG don't play Vertigo. Volder literally before that match did not have an official Vertigo on record at all. So they banned Nuke, which Woxic told us, me and Dinka, when we did the post game interview, that was the map that Eternal Fire spent the night before preparing for is the map that OG banned. Right? Well, <laughs> trick them right? there. Right. So put, so, okay. So sure, you wasted their time, but then you ended up playing Vertigo. And I was like, okay, yeah, this could be a mind game. We saw Carrigan just work this against Ents the other day. Maybe OG had been working on this secretly, like they have some good parts. Obviously, Nexa played this in G2. And, you know, like uh, Nico played it in Heroic. So maybe they've got a good base for this map and they have a good understanding of something they've been working on. They can counter strat Eternal Fire. And then on their T side, they literally had one strat, which was go A and die to Zentaras and Calyx Cal every single round through the smokes. It worked for Flames in the first two rounds where he was able to jump up, scaffolding, dodge the flashes that were coming above Gap and get the kill on the Calyx. And then after that, it never worked again. And they all they had was go A, right? The meme that a lot of people were, oh, Vertigo was just go A. If you actually watch good Vertigo teams play, they don't just go A. Good Vertigo teams do not just go A. That's, that's the truth of the matter. These guys just went A. And then they took pauses and had the coach chime in and then still just went A. So if you're preparing a risk like that and you literally have one strategy of go A, why did you, you didn't prepare the map? You took a risk and then you lost. Yeah. And probably a map that they could have won. They actually could have won that map. I think the last round, uh, X Flag clutched it in a one on two situation. They were called, the, the Turkish fans were calling him the hero. Um, and then, yeah, you're right. And then when you, you, you say the next map is Dust 2, a map that Eternal Fire are more than comfortable to play, like how shallow is the map pool? That's your pick. Like they thought your pick was going to be Nuke and then you picked Dust 2. So that'd have been like, Actually, you know what? Fuck yeah. Like, we'll play Dust 2. Like, you mean a spawn based map where Zentaras can aim? Yeah, that sounds pretty good to me, actually. But they had a double orb setup going and more, more and Woxic were orping. Yeah, you're right. That did kind of annoy me a bit. Some guy I'm, just I'm wrote, perplexed. Some guy just wrote about a Vertigo but just going gay. Maybe they prepared in Wingman. And I think there you that's go. Super funny. <laughs> I don't know if that's how Wingman works uh, for Vertigo. If Vertigo even exists in Wingman, but that's a good joke. It's a good joke. I appreciate it. Yeah, that one there, I don't know. I don't know. Like, I feel, where did that come from? Was it, did Nexa decide that? Did Rugger decide that? Did they decide that as a team? Because that one right there, I think like someone needs to go in front of like a council and explain the logic. I yeah. need to know. Maybe, maybe I need to understand time. why. Next side, flashbacks to G2. Did they mess Devil up the video? Picking, uh, who the I don't know, knows? man. That right there, I don't know. Like the the other results that obviously went against them as well to not qualify. We can talk about those, but this last one was like the most most fucked. I just I don't I don't know. I really had a hard time stomaching that one. And yeah. Mantu, like Mantu had like superstar level performances <laughs> in games. He was fucking balling out. 
All for nothing, of course. Um, like one time that we get him to be like super consistent, and like now he's going getting somewhere. Like Flames also was playing pretty well at this tournament, but he was playing poorly, and then he played well in like that. That like he had some hit and miss maps, but then he played quite well, like on Vertigo, for example. In the in and Nico wasn't playing well throughout most of the time, and then played pretty well on that Vertigo map as well. But I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Let's uh, speed through the rest of these teams. Uh, Fnatic. No Next. one surprised. Yeah, Poison, also a shit, also a was shit Poison dog, no? even playing this this tournament, or was it just like you know, I don't know, just someone a puppet of him being? I there. don't know, but like you know, like everybody, we had the whole thing with me and Khan last time around. After I talked about all this partner team bullshit, this is exactly what I'm talking about. This and EG yeah. are exactly what I'm talking about. So like, absolutely, that's fine. Absolutely dead team yep. right now so just call me a fucking hater do whatever you want but like you also this you also result speaks for itself you can't blame him that much because you know this is a team that this is not like this is not the team that they want it's not things shit happened maybe you can blame them for why it happened but you can't really be surprised by the result where they are right now it's like okay please fix the team and let's judge you in three months that's it yeah it needs to go through like another rebuild yeah, yeah. i mean pepsor can be it's that's one thing no, Poison is also like Poison also had a really hard time, and he hasn't hasn't really been good ever since like that first tournament that you played with Fnatic. What was that? Um, the RMR qualifies, right? E yeah, and EPL, so groups, even, yeah. EPL groups. I oh, think um, yeah, him and Mezzi and EPL groups were the reason they qualified for the playoffs. Oh, okay, fair. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, EPL groups. There you go. That's that's the one. Feels bad for Mezzi. Mezzi. Mezzi's good. Mezzi is too good for the team. It's literally I don't know. Uh, but Crims is still good too. Like Crimson it, Mezzi. I would build around Crimson Mezzi. Well, the problem is, like, how long can Mezzi go being in shit teams that are falling apart before he, like, his form tapers off or his motivation does? Like, Crims, uh, Mezzi, JKS, Azza, wonderful. There we go. Just JKS, Azza, wonderful. To pick any team. Yeah, yeah those three. To pick any, like, I'm just picking Aaron because we need an in game. Like, like I don't yeah. know. I don't know. Like, I don't look. I don't like the look of the vibe in that team, right? And I made a tweet about like leaders and stuff. Like I don't. I don't know. I that team to me it doesn't look like that. I don't know what the atmosphere is, but from the outside looking in, it doesn't look. Like it just looks dead. Yeah. Like they they know this is not the team, so it's just kind of that. That was the vibe for me for sure. Yeah. All right. Um, That's it. We got mouths, but. Well, I think we already spoke a little bit. Amal's about that. like feels yeah. bad for them. Really, yep, here, really sure. hurts. Cyclones coach of the year. Um, you know, <laughs> bid. Uh, not getting to the major, uh, but they had a rough time. I think one team that we didn't talk about was Ents. Uh, it wasn't listed here. I think just props to them for being consistently good yeah. still. You're right. Sphinx is a fucking Beast. monster. 40 kills in 24 rounds. Like that was what was that about? That was that was kind of that was kind of cheating, essentially. Like that was you fucking can't god tier shit. What just, was that about? You can't just like kill three people coming into the site every time. Every round. I no. just kill people, whatever. No. Like, sure, he got a couple of ecos, but, you know, then he fucking farmed everybody else. So, you know, he's fucking sick. Sphinx yeah. is nuts. Yeah. yeah. Just looking good. Now they have the showdown as well. Like, I really... I'm waiting for them to, you know, to fuck up, but they're not fucking up. Um, yeah. That's good. That's good science. Yeah, I mean, they also they also didn't have the toughest route. They basically, they lost to a Strauss and an IPN beat all the, like, lower, like, the lower half teams. They so took it's not care like, of business. Yeah, they, that's, yeah. The, that's the thing. Like, we've... We, even despite this, we saw more from them than from a lot of the other favorites because they actually did beat all the teams that they were supposed to beat and then, you know, played some yeah. close games. I think the Astralis game, Astralis and an IP, you know? I think the Astralis game as well is just like a stupid performance from Blame F. So, you know, he owned them on that. Overpass. It was, it was, oh, really yeah, rough. was overpass, but... it was really rough and they just never could never do anything. They finished like 13 2 down and made it still competitive in the second half. So, I don't know. I think they beat. Astralis, like nine out of if it's a best of three, they beat Astralis easy. Yeah. Okay. Uh let's jump into Skinnyana. Everyone good? Yeah. Let's do I it. guess I should have probably given Dimitri a little bit of a heads up. Dimitri, you ready for Skinnyana? Yes, he is. He's always ready. Dimitri, well, well, just ready. Yeah, look yeah, at him. He's go. so ready. He's fucking ready. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, type bit skins in the chat right now. We're gonna do who wants to be a skinnyana. I suppose it'd be me and striker against the questions of prof here. Is that how the yeah, way you're doing do, it? Prof? You can do that. You can do All that. All right, what's tonight's oh. theme? And tonight's theme is tonight's theme is I really had a tough time coming up with questions, so the questions are all over the place. Hey, hey. it's like um, tonight's theme whose line is it anyway? 
The points are all made up, you know. Okay. So we'll see what the questions are, everybody. Uh, I hope you're excited. Who wants to be a skin in there? Type bit skins in chat. You right now, as a viewer, have a chance to win one tier of these skins, depending on how many me and Striker get correct. So question number one, coming to you thick, hot, and fast. Drumroll, please. The highest rated player across all RMRs was Axel 1.51, Simple 1.40, or Yuri 1.55. Um, Yuri. I feel like it was Yuri. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Locking in C, Yuri. And the correct answer is the reveal. Yuri is correct. One there we from go. one. All righty. Question number two. Good one for everybody playing at home. Uh, which team qualified for I Am Dallas last week? Evil Genius is looking for Org or Fnatic. The correct answer here was LFO. The yep. European qualifiers are yet to come to their conclusion. LFO BG didn't. Beat, BG didn't. LFO beat Order uh, after losing to them in the bracket stage. Yeah, and Renegades for the first time have not won a domestic tournament because they lost the open qualifier. To, to Aftershock. Ricky Aftershock. Uh, oh, no and, I think, and I think one of the players tweeted that they lost to aftershave which i think is fucking hilarious i saw vexite i saw vexite tweet that as well but uh that's with like ricky and a couple of other old names and they're like yeah. infrequent in just frequent yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Frequent 4K? i play uh, him in source oh yeah where he orbs yeah 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 remember yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. 4k google yeah. that guys good lad in frequent. it's fun getting yeah. him back he went over to valorant for a while uh all right question number three yes please uh which two countries will be represented with the most players at the upcoming major well it has to be brazil Denmark and Russia, like... Russia and Brazil, or Denmark and Brazil? I mean, I'm sure one of them is Russia. I think it's Denmark I'm and Brazil. I'm sure one of them is Russia. Australia's qualified in Copenhagen Flames are two full teams. There's yeah. already 10 players. I mean, Brazil, we players, already had the Inba well qualifier. Outsiders who have two. It has to be Denmark. Uh, Navi who have three. We're not even it's, counting Carrigan six, here. Nine. Uh, what other Russian players? Monacy is 10. Um... Am I missing? We didn't count somebody? heroic. I didn't count heroic. It has to be Denmark. Oh, like 15 yeah. I guess players. Yeah, you have like Denmark. You have Denmark. Okay. Yeah. But, but I, I think, think it's going to be Brazil. It. You don't think it's Brazil? Imperial Brazil. are a full team. Oh, yeah. You're uh, right. Fury is a full team. Um, Fuck. Yeah, I, guess, I guess you're right. I guess you're right. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, go for uh, it. If you want Denmark and Russia, go for it. Denmark and Russia? Uh, <laughs> Whatever. I've got Denmark and Brazil. Oh, no. It was Denmark and Russia. You know who you. You missed two full teams, Spirit and Force. Oh, uh, no. Fuck. Fuck me out of that one. <laughs> Sorry, that's both have, my fault, everyone. Both have 20, 20 players. All right, question number four. Yeah, okay, so I was right with 10, but I missed two, two teams. <laughs> All right. Uh, Cajun B, Rush, Automatic, Vice, Golden. How many maps has this lineup played for Cloud9? Holy shit. Less than 30. Surely less than 30. Um, wait, give me one second. Agent B, Rush, Automatic, Vice, Golden. It's like early year, the early 2019. Is this where I'm talking about the sleeping 19, on Cloud9 this is, early, this is early 2019. Is this when I lost my call? was no I longer think, playing there after the major. I think honestly. that was the flush uh, Kiyoshima lineup, honestly. Okay, so same shit. Zelsis. <laughs> I don't know. Between uh, 30 and 60? Th honestly, this question is just for memes, just to make fun of the lineups that Cloud9 had. Like, what a shit, Steven. I'm going to say less than, yeah, probably less than 30. I guess less than 30? Right. Less, 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 less than 30. Between 30, and, between 30 60. and 60. I don't know. I didn't say anything. We're <laughs> <laughs> lucky in B. Correct answer is B. All right. They played 50 maps, man. This is like, this is that okay. actual team. I can't Yeah, I'm trying this. to remember, like, what, what else they played on other than Karavica that year. Oh, gee. I guess okay. EPL or whatever. Let's see yeah. if we can salvage this. Let's see if we get the 15 for the $10 skin. Um, question five. I think that I'm one of the dangerous callers. I think that I'm one of the dangerous Probably callers dangerous. in the world. When I think one of the most dangerous callers in the world when I'm confident is a quote from Apex, Snappy, or Carrigan. From this event. Let's see. Headline it's... reader. Snappy? Riker? Right Help me. I snappy? actually don't remember this. I don't know. I feel like it's snappy. I'm trying to. I'm trying to work out which one. Which of these I feel like snappy I did, is a I really good read. momentum based caller. So that's why I. Think I, I I want to. I lean towards snappy because I feel like Kerrigan wouldn't have to say this. Like there's no way he would say this about himself. I feel like, and Apex is kind of like I'm almost in the same. I'm I'm in the same boat. I feel like it has to. But be I feel snappy, like I'm man. talking myself into thinking it is. We got 12 seconds. You pick. I feel this like one. Kerrigan I and Apex one. go with Snappy. I feel like Kerrigan and Apex wouldn't say this about themselves, it's because they don't have to. You go sure? With snappy. Locking in B, snappy. snappy. Correct answer is 
Carrigan. It was Carrigan. Okay, I got a bit of, okay. a, a bit of swagger about him here. Okay, well, we I feel like get... the... okay. You got destroyed, guys. You're this so is the bad, first time we've only gotten like three out of five. Normally, it's like, like four a... or, or plus. So, guess what? We have lo- one lucky winner here this evening, but not so lucky as uh, Striker and I failed on these. So, you're only getting a 750 skin, which is one of the lowest I think we've ever given away. But you know what? That's what you it get. That's what it is. So the basically, I've, is, called, I've called Snappy egotistical, and I did. I, I got think the, it's I egotistical. Got the wrong thing. Oh, I, I thought. Honestly, I, it sounds like a snappy quote. Yeah, I thought that like a snappy you, quote I knew you were going to you're gonna fail, fall for it. So the, it's the, lone, the Lone Ranger, uh, 0811, is the winner. I'm sorry, Lone Ranger. Congratulations on winning a 750 skin. I apologize that we were inadequate tonight <laughs> when it came to answering questions. Um, but we we hope that you'd like the skin from Bitskins anyway. Thank you. Okay, I feel a little bad, a bit bad for Mr. Ranger. Uh, all right, that was uh, Who Wants to Be a Skin Unair? We've obviously run over here. Um, Blast Showdown starts tomorrow, uh, I think it is, or is it the next day? Uh, anyway, it starts tomorrow. Soon. tomorrow. 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 Okay, uh, you can check that out. Quick quick thoughts on that? Or you want to go over it? I was just going to yeah, go sure. try to view your questions here. Um, okay, I'll quickly bring up the North American side. The North American side, it's a, so it's a bracket. It's a best of three I forgot there the was a North through. American side. Yeah, so there's North American, European side of things. So Fury vs. Sharks, Godsense vs. Evil Geniuses, that's the top side of the bracket. Lower side of the bracket is Cole vs. MIBR, Liquid vs. Pain. Um, so that's the that's the setup over there. And uh, the One first spot, team yeah, the first team qualifies, so it's cutthroat. Yeah. Um, I think we also okay. had these teams recently play over there at Dallas. So mm-hmm. uh, we've already seen how that one goes. I would be expecting Liquid vs. Fury grand final. Has to be, yeah. but yeah, also just like interesting tests for a team like MIBR playing against Complexity. How are they going to look going into the into the major godsend? Can they still be, you know, a force? Are they still a force? So uh, I think that's cool, but like Furia, Furia Liquid has to be the grand final. Cool. Um, okay. And on the other side, we have the European side of things. Uh, the top side of the bracket is Heroic NKT and Entsk Opening and Flames. The bottom side of the bracket is Australis Movistar Riders and NRP Bad News Eagles. Striker, any key takeaways here, or do you think we might get like a heroic NIP matchup that we didn't get during uh, EPL? Yeah, I mean, Answer it chance could to... be literally any two teams out of those four men. Like and Flames, meet in the, but even Copenhagen and Flames, yeah, yeah, actually, like especially after well, this Armor run, like it's so difficult to so... call this actually. Copenhagen Flames are like landers now, right? Like mm-hmm. they they seem to perform more consistently yeah. and better on land. So I yeah, think we got true. there in the landers. Line. So. We would just take Copenhagen Flames out of contention just because it's online. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of teams here. There's a lot of matchups I'd like to see. It's good to see if Bad News Eagles are like able to perform after h- hitting such a high, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Um, Movistar Riders, they don't have a they don't have the major to play for here, so this for them is very important. NKT is the only real curveball here. The the uh, Asian side, it's got Dobu, Zion, Korean player, Impression, uh, Cool Coolest, I guess. It's not Coolest. And, uh, it's uh, it's Annihilation actually from Mongolia. Oh, they have uh, we have up- I think we haven't okay. updated it yet. So that's the only thing. They just announced that he was added. And uh, I don't think YouTube can get upset with this one. The guy's name is KNTZ, which um, <laughs> is no, K-Nuts. You're fine. Uh, it's K-Nuts. You're fine. Uh, so it's, I don't know what it is. It probably is the one yeah, I don't want to probably is what you're thinking, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So I think there, that's pretty open, but you guys can check that out. Some more best of the reaction. Good to see where the teams are at. Good to see, you know, what level of Counter-Strike we're going to get from them overall. I have um, an interview with Impression coming up tomorrow somewhere nice. early in the day because they're playing later. Okay, beautiful. Yeah, and I think like the games start, I had it here one second ago. The games start, uh, just to, in case you guys at home want to watch, at 4.30 CEST. We're in summertime yep. now, right? Yep. Uh, that's the first series. Second series starts at uh, 7.30. And then I believe that the Counter-Strike goes all night, right? Then you get the North American stuff later. So it's, uh, it's a bit of a wombo combo situation there. Um, all right. Do we want to quickly just go through some of these viewer questions and then yeah. fucking be done Let's with it? it? Let's throw all right. Some don't stuff. worry about going to the bumper, Dimitri. We'll just jump into playtime heading. Don't worry mm-hmm. about it. And uh, we will quickly go into these questions. Uh, I retweeted it. Did you mark any here that you, you thought Prof or Striker? Uh, there, was, there was some question. Let me see. There was a question on the site, actually. Uh, someone asked about HLTV Peak and the second different presenters. I think we'll have another person on next next week so then you can figure it out who it is and how it's going um generally interested in feedback on that people enjoying it not enjoying it what they'd like to to see more um a bunch of questions i'm like nice this guy wrote like his his name is another sponge stan and okay. he wrote like in a very nice and human way so i appreciate that essentially okay. um other questions 
there'll be a lot of new visitors, uh, new major visitors come May. What what should be live viewer etiquette? This is actually an interesting thing. And I think, I don't know if we want to go super in depth on it, but I think in general, try not to be an idiot. That's that's always the number that's one. A, that's a good try one. not to like yell, shoot through smokes, even though I feel like the, the audio is a, a, like the and noise canceling is going to be good and all of this, but tr don't do stuff like that. And don't be don't be annoying to like, you know, you see a player or a caster or whatever. And if they're busy and doing something, don't be an annoying person. If they're hanging out at the bar and talking to people, you don't have to go there and, you know, try to talk to them for five minutes, 10 minutes all the time. You know, be uh, be reasonable. Try to be understanding of their time as well. Not saying don't approach anyone ever, but, you know, be. I, I can give a couple of examples of like when's okay and when's not okay. Yeah. Like when's when's not okay is like at the urinal in the bathroom, for example. Yeah, that's a bad. Like that's, that's bad one spot. where like I'm not saying wait outside the bathroom door for them, but maybe just like a hey, you don't have to like try and fist bump them or whatever while they're holding their dick. Mm -hmm. um, another one that is uh, like, and this one here, this is for, I understand for a lot of younger people. Like I'm talking like honestly, early teenagers. Honestly, I'm just gonna say there was this situation at one after party when. A player was taking a piss and a guy was taking trying to take a selfie with him while yeah. he was big. I know people are drunk, but like that's not that's not like that's that's ridiculous. Don't yeah, do that, that that's what got like Dr. Disrespect in trouble, right? For live streaming in the bathroom. So yeah. let's like let's leave the phones in the pockets when we're in the bathrooms, guys. Uh unless you're taking a shit and you need time to read. Um another one, another one that is key is like I understand for like a lot of fans seeing players, like if you end up staying in the same hotel or something like that, that that you probably want to like you can say hi. No, I don't think anybody has any issues with hi. Um, but one of the things is if they've just had like a devastating loss, I've seen fans after players have had devastating losses. I'm talking even grand finals. Um, and then people being like, oh my God, it's such and such. Can I have a photo? And it's like, as those players are looking completely dead on the inside as they have just finished the game and are on the elevator back to their room, right? Um, it's always like a touchy, touchy one. Right. Um, that's just one that can be a bit a bit weird. So just kind of keep that and how they might be feeling. They obviously want to they love the fact that you're a fan and stuff. Don't let that reflect on how they feel about you. Not all of them are the same as well. But I've just seen that when somebody definitely doesn't look like they want to have a conversation before. Um, and I think the other etiquette is like we're all there to have a good time, but yeah, just be respectful of other human beings, right? Just a basic one. Just be respectful no. of, of everybody. That's a pretty straightforward, simple one. Um what else we got going on here? I'm just don't have a fan of signs. Yeah, like you could you can have some fun with it, but remember this is you know, people of all of all uh, ages are watching. Um, there's a lot of questions like people just spamming B N E. Dude, some mm. of the some of their fans like I made a tweet about <laughs> anime. Crazy, right, I made a tweet about anime like after, and they were like, "Oh, you don't care about the Bad News Eagles win." I just finished casting a different series, and I've just put like a tweet just to just to give me some information about anime, like. I'm sorry that that coincides with the Bad News Eagles win. Like, yeah, I was just like, they're quickly becoming the new Brazilian fan base. And um, I was even talking to some of the players. I told them like, you guys need to kind of speak up on this and try to get them. You know, these are people that are going to listen to you more than anyone else, and uh, that that behavior is going to get you as players hated as well. Um, and it's not enjoyable. I know Striker got some. <laughs> I had an unreasonable guy, DM. I had well. an unreasonable guy called me racist because I didn't comment on the fact that they won or just like on them in general, even though like I, I didn't see one of their games live. I didn't. Like, how am I meant to comment on the thing? Is, like, he, 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 he started it by saying, Are you mad that your Czech team didn't make it through? And BNE <laughs> to which your racist did. I'm like, <laughs> I've literally said nothing about BNE in the entire time. Like, how did I, how was I racist by saying nothing? No, and he's oh, like, that's a problem. Well, you did. Lucas and Prof are so cool. They're constantly like showing support. I'm like, so because I didn't show my undying support to this team, I'm, to, I'm racist yeah. towards them. I'm like, well, you're not worth talking to. Bye. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of fucking crazy stuff. Like, the, like, Fantastic for the team, right? To to yeah. get that, like being a. We already spoke about this. I'm not going to fucking read. Yeah, we have already said positive things about it. But I'm scrolling through. Like 90 percent of this is just people typing B N E. Like that's not yeah. even a question. Um, we talked a lot about the system. Yeah, talked that's about all covered. The Seagulls OG. Yeah, not O G man. O G making changes. Huh? What do you think? Nah, 
Not until after the break. Or not, not until the no, break, probably. I think, Who do I they think get we, anyway? I think we kind of covered, covered all of the bases. Anything you want to add, Chad? There's been uh, some uh, drama from your world. Yeah, but uh, we often don't. We don't. We like stay away from like all those kind of headlines, don't we? Yeah. We yeah really I just wish it would shit. stop, man. Like it's every time too. Like you, every is it every fucking time? Major, every yeah. fucking major, you get somebody. You get somebody but hurt that they didn't get invited, or that they that maybe the fee wasn't right, or they just couldn't come to terms, or maybe like a part of their schedule didn't match up, and that the organizer didn't want. Like, just shut up about it. Come on. I saw Richard make a tweet today about like um. The not fact doing that, like, the announcements yeah and I, and I was actually talking in the green room with some people about this yeah. while we we're actually there like they didn't do announcements for the rmr and i think that's great i think so too i yeah. think like the the thing is it's like it's it's not great if you're a newer talent trying to break out right but right. like in terms of these events like it, it it just becomes like a conversation um on the forums and on reddit and on twitter and everything right where it's like uh it 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 doesn't become like celebrating that this person's here. It becomes like, why isn't this person here? This yeah. other person fucking yeah. sucks. Yeah, this guy took this guy's spot. This yeah. is like, yeah. So it's, I mean, it will be, it's obviously still cool that you get news like, you know, shocks during, during, during the sure. RMRs or majors because it's somebody new, somebody obviously very well liked in another game and stuff like that. So like there's a certain hype behind that just by the fact that the person is there, right? So like I, I understand the value in, in, in announcing that, but I, I generally, generally I agree that um yeah there's it, just brings too much shit yeah yeah uh, and like i don't know the my my biggest like from a personal standpoint like my biggest gripes in the past have been like for a major that i wasn't hired for for example at the e-league majors i didn't work the e-league majors right um and i didn't tweet saying that i wasn't working the event but my biggest problem was and this is now on reflection um an issue of mine like a shortcoming of mine like i wanted to tweet and say hey you know i'm looking to do work around the major if somebody wants right. you know, me to go there and interview or something like that but mm. i should have a better way i should have more contacts where i can go and like email Behind this company scenes. and yeah. say hey look i'm free if you you know instead of me having to do that part because like i, I don't want to other people that are not doing the major have done that so yeah so uh, some of them will be doing other things during yeah. the major and and that's that's one of the things right is like trying to find other work and that's and now that i've thought about it on reflection since back in those days that this is probably what i should have done then as opposed to just sitting there and, and not be yeah. announced right yeah. um so like I, I don't know it's it's one of these things at the end of the day it's what people like listening to as well is subjective um some people yep. like other people's voices more than others or some people like the things that some people talk about more than others and and it's also um, that like it's also like the tournament organizers broadcast that they're trying to set up right like it's not it's not a i, I guess like obviously you can call it a public service but it's not like you are entitled to having the, the, the all the people that you like there you know the, like the broadcast obviously wants to be like the tournament organizer wants the broadcast to be a certain way and so they're going to make some exclusions or additions that you might not like because of a personal preference you know yeah so we're hired like, by pgl we're not hired by Valve. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So, yeah. so that's that's like that's what I'm saying. Like it's obviously the tournament organizers tournament, and they want to present the tournament in some way. Like, of course, like if you like some other people some some other people more, I understand the feeling, but like you don't have to be an asshole about it. Like it's you don't also know the reasons why they like certain people weren't there. Maybe you met schedules might didn't match up, you know, or whatever it is. Like maybe the fees didn't well, didn't really match up. Maybe somebody was asking unreasonable fee or Maybe there is a budget, you know, that they have to adhere to. You know, there's all these certain things that, like, you can't really see into, and you're gonna make, you know, your own assumptions about it when, um, when you don't really know. And obviously, like yeah. now that we've had some talent actually come out publicly about something, obviously everybody can can read into it and and think that it's probably COVID and their like PGL's uh, um, vaccination mandate, right? Like that's probably the thing that's at least Semler and Thorne were talking about with their immoral whatever reference um immoral what was well, it exactly I don't what know. sorry i don't know i haven't i didn't spend too much time reading anyway reading i think but, yeah but yeah it's just uh it's it feels like it's so like look at me i didn't get invited to the major and here's here's why and you know like it's it, it from my understanding those two didn't even get invited to the major you know so it's like it's just it's just feels incredibly self-entitled for no for no reason really oh i, I think 
Yeah, go pro. I just want to say that the talent that we have at the major is actually pretty good. I think there are like a lot of great people there. Um, I feel I'm not going to like single out anyone. I feel bad for Dinko, obviously, just because I think he's doing a great job. But at the same time, he's super, super new. Yeah. And I feel like he's just a guy that's going to he's going to have his he's going to have his time in the spotlight. I just want to give him a shout out. Yeah, yeah that's, that's it. cool. Okay. I mean, there are obviously some big names that are missing from there. I think Andrews and Moses are going to be the two biggest ones that people will probably miss. But you know, of course, yeah. I mean, Moses is so versatile; he could have done anything. But yeah. you know, things things turn out specific ways. Okay. Um, yeah, this is not really a we turn into forums if if we keep having this conversation in a yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. But um, I'm, just, I'm just trying to say, like, the, don't be an asshole towards other talent or whatever. Like, obviously, if you say. If you say why isn't that why isn't that guy there? A lot of the time, you could also mean why is that guy there? Like you know, it's just pretty uh, disrespectful a lot of the time as well to the, the the way that people react to these announcements. You know, I I think I like I've been obviously given a lot of thought um, as somebody like I use the forums and everything to kind of gauge where the community sentiment is at on certain things to kind of help me talk about certain things, right? Like so, it's it's obviously important that I stay up to date on those things. So I see the thread names and that kind of shit. Um, but I, I, I also, we have like a, we have a weird relationship with the way that we interact with our fan bases, like with what you do as a commentator or somebody in a desk, or whatever, a large point of it, because there's a lot more talking in commentary for Counter-Strike than there is in commentary for say football or basketball mm. and stuff, right? So, the, and a big part of that as well is because some of these things turn into not only are they just talking about the game, but some of it is like interjecting personality into it as well, right? Um, which is a part of it when you have like long form online Counter Strike, or we had the COVID era studio Counter Strike, yeah. with that, where it turned into like something that people weren't only just tuning into the to the Counter Strike, became a bit of a different entertainment product then um, because people were locked indoors. We had a lot more view, you know. It, it kind of changed in that regard. Um, so it's one of these things where you know you might watch somebody cast a game. And then you don't like the way that they approached it because they were having more fun here than if it was a serious match, but you thought it was a serious match because it was a team that you're a fan of, right? For example, right? So a lot of this stuff can get attached to things um, in different ways. And 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 basically this relationship I was talking about here is like, we're quite close with our fans. Like I'll actively, when I'm doing a game that isn't super entertaining, ask for people to tweet and have a relationship with me over social media, like a back and forth. So that means we're quite close in terms of how I can reciprocate. But then we're also in a position where like people will talk about us like we don't exist in the community, like we're like off on television yeah, and we're behind yeah, the screen, you know, and we don't, but, but, but we do. And then like that kind of stuff is like, but, but, but there as viewers, as people who enjoy the entertainment product would talk about us. Like I would talk about, like I'm watching the Johnny Depp and Amber Heard trial. I'm watching XQC, like fucking break this down with these 80K viewers. And like that's reality TV, and that's kind of like in a way the way that broadcast talent get treated, right? Like yeah. almost like it's a reality TV thing. And I think in certain circumstances where there's like maybe not a whole lot of personality coming from like a lot of players, because either we're choosing to not show a lot of it or it doesn't get shown or they don't have the type of personality that comes through, then it kind of comes to this area. And this is like the worst that, that that's where it becomes the worst thing. Like I think um I think the most important thing, like this is kind of how I this is kind of how like, I try and put myself forward. The most important thing at the end of the day has to be the game and the competition. Like nothing else should come in front of that when we're talking about commentary or interviewing or hosting or analyst desk work for the competition that is Counter-Strike. Like the end of the day, the, the thing that we want to make the hero of is the players and the server, the type of game that they're playing and, and the game, right? So um, that's just where I think like a lot of people could probably use some refocusing on the fans too, right? Like at the end of the day, it's all about celebrating these players and, and what they can do and what they can achieve. Um, yeah. Okay. We ended up on a bit of a tangent there on the way out the door, but uh, hopefully we left that on a good message. The best thing is the game. So, uh, oh, Dimitri. No, like you're all right. To, I would like to end this on a bit more positive note. Uh, okay. This is, a, <laughs> this is a shameless plug for HLTV confirmed Twitter. Please give oh. a follow right now. I give you no other chance to do so. Uh, the account is going to get closed. Actually, no. Actually not. But anyway, you're missing a lot. But by well, not you following know, it, it won't by much. Yeah. So uh, 
striker i would like to, you uh to retweet this meme because it's great and uh, other than that thank you very much i'm done Wonderful. <laughs> there there you go. Go. Nice. Yeah. shameless plugs shameless you have the mutual charming in there it's been good having him produce the show the last couple of times around and uh I think that's about it, guys. Uh, thank you again for tuning in. This has been episode 14, season six, uh, The Calm Before the Storm. We will schedule in a show for next week. At some time, we don't have anything penciled in right now uh, and need to work out the travel times to the major and everything like that still. I, I haven't got all those those details ironed out just yet. Um, and the live show, we will be working on and, and get some more details out there. Maybe we have to do like a really cheap ticket price just so we know how many people would like to come or some form of a sign-up, something along those lines. Um, but we will we'll work all that out. We'll put the stuff over the socials. HLTV confirmed Twitter is probably a great place to find that. And uh, and we'll go from there. So uh, thank you for tuning in. Thank you again to the sponsors, obviously Extrify, Bitskins, and M1Bet. Gamble responsibly. And uh, it's been another episode. So be nice. Have a good time. And yeah, in, in, enjoy your week, everyone. Goodbye. Add some fun to your space with Extrify, designed in Sweden with focus on quality products built on experience. You're looking at Project 4, their fourth generation of products with super cool colorways to stand out, with matching sets to satisfy with a solid B4 bungee, lightweight ergonomic M4 mouse, the K4 keyboard is fantastic, all of which are performance focused, and finish it off with colorful GP4 mouse mats that are bold in design and smooth on the surface. The retro theme in particular has got the feels. Complete your setup with Extrify. No regrets. Guaranteed. Stuck ranking up? Lost the motivation to grind? Bored of clicking heads on AIM maps? Get some color into your game. Bitskins.com. Buying and selling skins made easy. Tons of payment methods and instant cash outs. Just choose your dream skins, select your preferred payment method, and start grinding again. If you want to play like the pros, you've got to look like the pros. 